Alright, I push the button. We should be going live. Sure. Record right now. I just saw Owen Benjamin. Alright. Oh. Your letter's one of those. Yeah, huh? that's true. I might, might have mailed a, a small donation and, and some information to a uh, very controversial stand up comedian named Owen Benjamin and told him that I would come talk about the flat earth with him. So, flat earth conspiracies. That's how this all started. What is this, 48? Is it 48? It's got to be 48. Yep. Wow. Mm -hmm. What's the numerology of uh, 48? Right, we'll have to look that up later. Yeah, it's 12, so that would be 3. Welcome to Picture Show 48 if you're watching the rerun. You it's time to grab to your smartphone you or your smart device and you promote to to me. via hashtag and hyperlink this wonderful you live episode. If you got something to say, write it on the hyperlink to me. Nice. I paid 11 bucks to shout out Adam Lord's name and uh, Jim Tenable, the guy who made Earthworm Jim. He was streaming live, so that was fun. Write it on the hyperglass to me. What's up, also known as? You're the first in the chat. Gypsy Hustle, hello. Whoa. Krista, also in the chat. What is up, everybody? Diamond Mine in the chat. Was that your chair or a cash register? <laughs> it wasn't here. It wasn't here. Uh, I think that was me. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that sound was on the that sound you're hearing was on the eastern seaboard. <laughs> can they hear us I, now? Yes, they can. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's what he meant when he said he pushed the button. That was the official announcement that you're on the air. Oh, got it. We are live. <laughs> We're live, live. We're doing it live. That's <laughs> <laughs> it. We'll do it live. We're doing it live. <laughs> exactly. This is like practice stream for when we really go live in three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Jim's moving the goalposts. <laughs> Dead air problem. <laughs> what in the world? Continue watching. Yes. Can we... Video Why paused. Why is the video paused? How strange. Alex, do, do you have a song to sing? <laughs> I don't think. So, does Alex send me?
Joel Rogans of the world. Joel Rogan. The Joel, anal homunculi. Don't forget to ask about Joel Rogan. Oh! Hit that Rogan up button. <laughs> I forgot to tag anybody in my latest tweet. Okay, I got the pig contest thing up there. All right. I, I put it in the Discord and I said vote early and often. I don't know if you can actually vote more than once, but we'll see. Yeah. Probably. You might be able to. That would be good. Our fans are magic. They'll figure it out. I don't remember that. What's up, Civilian X? What's up, Civ X? People, check out Civilian X if you haven't had a chance. He's got some compelling information on his Twitter and YouTube. He's a lesser known account, but an interesting character. I just can't pronounce this one. Above it? Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't think any of us can. It's written in runes. Is that Ye. Yai. Just call him Kanye. It's a Mandar. Or is it when I go to sleep, anyway, the rooms say, ooh, this is going to be a great show. When I yeah, you're right. Day, it should be. It will be. Well, it won't be as good as the Smoke Out show, but it'll be pretty good. We never had a Smoke Out show. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hey, would some of you guys uh, go in and uh, test the poll and tell me if it's working for you? If it's porking for you? <laughs> if it's porking for you. Because I just tried it, and it, it told me I had already voted. But then it, re it registered my vote. It just it just sort of complained also at the same time. So, All right, so know. we are encouraging every... Is the link is in the Discord, you said? It is. Uh, it's, a, it's in the, you know, the channel that's about the pig 
naming contest. So the, uh, would you like me to put it in the general the tab too? Piggy. Yeah, you can drop it in the chat too. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are naming the pig mascot of Piggy Bank tonight. And your entries have all been logged into an easy to click poll that you can find via Discord. Find it in the chat. Find it on plusultraclub.com, I believe. And whoever wins will be getting a secret prize IRL. To be mailed to you. That's to right. How, You'll how have to have a, lo a safe location that you can receive it. Post office box or... Or uh, <laughs> your own post office if you have your own uh, <clears throat> kingdom. <laughs> if you have your own kingdom. That should be our first goal. Or Queendom. So just send it to the Plus Ultra Picture Show uh, post office. Not post office box. Send it to the Plus Ultra Club post office. Alright, let's see. I'm gonna vote for one. So, um, I guess I need to find the, the, you know, the show and tell people about it. <clears throat> that it's on, that is. Now is the Have time we told to, people that to the promote. show is on? Yep, we are promoting. Uh, I, I dropped it on Twitter and Facebook like I usually do. I think I'm going to skip the Instagrams because I'm not seeing a lot of views coming in from the Insta. I'm not sure how to vote. Are you on Instagram, Alex? Yeah, you're on there. Uh, yeah, but I mean, I don't really post that much. Yeah, yeah, I was just, I just, I thought about it and I was like, yeah, but it's more just like personal thing, you know, not like a bunch of. Yeah, I don't really post my personal shit. Like, uh, well, I guess I do, but maybe not. Oh, like, some pictures or whatever. Shit, yeah. <laughs> just like my everyday personal life, I guess. <laughs> That's how a lot of people use it. I love Instagram, but I'm a doodler on my phone with digital art and stuff, so. Yeah. You're a doodler on your phone. Doodler. Doodler. I mean, I've had some telephone duels too. I usually win. I was really mean to an Indian tech service guy about three months ago. Because I asked him to take me off the list and he said no. So I just went off on him for like 45 minutes until he finally hung up. So, Tracy, do we click on the. Uh names to vote for them um okay so this is why i wanted some yeah, other people to we're beta look at testing, so, uh, like when uh, i when i did it yeah i clicked i i clicked the circle next to the name and then i pushed a button at the bottom that was like blank there was nothing it didn't say anything but there was a little square and i pushed it and then it said you've already voted and then i looked in the you know, the choice was there. It had, it had registered my vote, so I don't know. I don't, and then now I can't redo it to, fi to figure out, you know, I can't repeat it myself. So that's why I need you guys to yeah, and tell trying. me if it's working. And it's just uh, in the name, the piggy link. Okay, here it is. Oh, it's so cute. It's what now? Oh, I'm just mumbling. I'm sorry. I was just trying to navigate <laughs> to the link. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm not seeing a circle on my phone here. Oh, maybe it's not phone friendly. Check on my We can always do it live if we have to. You, we've got a list now, so. Oh, there's definitely one vote. Oh, wait. Maybe this one's telling me, too, but other people are voting. Total voters once. Yeah. Great. Thanks a lot. These names are great. They are great. Are we uh, advertising this? Yeah, yeah. You can drop it out anywhere you want people to come check out what we're doing, Alex, for sure, man. Okay. Are you going to post it on, on uh, sorry, on Twitter? Yeah, yeah. I already posted it up. I think, I think these guys did, too. Okay. Regarding the show, you mean to posting that on Twitter? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't 
know who Hugh de Piggins is. Did you tag me, Sean? Oh, I didn't hear. I'll go do that right now. Here. Oh, okay. I just want to, but I can just put on my uh, beat here. I just tagged you to. A... What's uh, what's with all the dead air? Uh, there's just sometimes there's a little space between the songs. I'm I'm watching it oh, I... still rolling. This song is called the Presidential right. Stump. What's up? Stump. The presidential stump. A presidential lump. They never really knew exactly what it ever was. Some people think it's this. Some people think it's that. Some people seem to think that it has something to do with the head. My, my brother wrote these songs. It's a long-standing picture show tradition to have Adam Lore bring us in. and performers as I can to have them rally around everything Adam's ever done and just tear it up. I want this with a full uh, English horn section. Looks like we're having a little trouble in the chat for the voting also. Yeah, folks, if it's not working, yeah. don't sweat it, don't fret it. Uh, Tracy's website had an automatic uh, poll creator, but it might not be uh, mo mobile friendly. It might not work on your mobile platform. And if that's the case, what we will do is we will devise some way to uh, number the names and vote in the chat, um, or we'll come up with another free quick place we can copy paste. But that's not going to be till the end because we've got a special guest with special information about a very mysterious character who's got cheese in his name. <laughs> oh, yeah. What, Eddie oh, Munster? Man, yeah, yeah, Eddie Munster. This, that's where this song keeps rolling. I'd say we're almost ready to bounce here anyway, so. This song is called Hyperglass, and I have always imagined it to be like a 4D iPad. If you have something to say, send it on the hyperglass to me. And we all have hyperglasses in our pockets now. This was written before the smartphone was so uh, fantastically popular. Before phones were probably smart, right? You know, Tracy, when I first made those uh, static screens of weird art with the Plus Ultra logo for the website. I really didn't like them, but they've grown on me. Like when you needed some extra placeholder pictures. Oh, yeah, yeah. They keep coming by in the memes, and it's like, okay. <laughs> I I made them and gave them to you because it's like I knew they'd work, but I was like, oh, I'm not really happy with these, but they've kind of grown on me. Me too. I've even gotten used to seeing that one distorted logo you did uh, just f going by as though it were a meme. Now that distorted <laughs> logo, I mean, I'm happy with the concept, but it's so bad. It's, I mean, like, it was just a concept, not like... Because you can't no, read something it. It's just hard on the eyes. It's really hard to look at. It makes oh, me want to yeah. print it full. I want to, I want to get... I want to get to the point where we're making full print t-shirts right away. 
not because we're gonna make money off of it, but because then we'll all have a uniform, you know. But they have. To, I like the idea of everything that's plus ultra and picture show is always with the option at least to have it fully printed. Cause that that's something that's just coming around where you can do that print on demand too. And I wouldn't mind even you know ordering fifty or hundred or whatever. But I could see doing that logo in like negative images as far as the colors go and then making it into a pattern and making it just intolerable, like a horrible piece of clothing that I would, I'd really like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Oh, sure. I should have been on the trigger there. Oh. Well, we got to see. Yeah, we're going to have three more minutes and then we're coming. Because this song is worth hearing and then we're going to push the button, folks. you got three minutes to go uh, get a drink of water, run to the bathroom, grab a snack. Don't touch that dial. <laughs> yeah, I need to get a new chair. <laughs> <laughs> It's a great idea. The song's called Volcano Love Side of a volcano. Yeah. Is that is that the same one as, as I'm in love with a girl in a pipe? No, that's a different song. Oh. <laughs> All right. And on that note, we're rolling down, folks. We're getting ready to push the button. We're gonna come over here and see you right now. Let's fade on through. Hello. Welcome to Hello. picture show number forty-eight. Welcome. Yeah. I'm SB. This is Jim, and we have with us special guest Alex Rivera. Hiding right there somewhere is also, of course, Tracy Twyman. And um, Alex, under the gun, has uh, come in to, to bring us information about Melchizedek. And, um, you know, I don't even think I had a chance to change the title. I'm going to have to do that. But we are super excited to welcome a Alex to the show. Thanks for joining us, and I, we're totally stoked to hear what you have to say, man. How's it going? I'm good, man. Yeah, I mean, I know it was kind of last minute, but... Uh... I did figure out that I think uh, tonight would be a good night. So, I mean, I thought it wouldn't work out, but then I guess it did. <laughs> so, so I decided, oh, well, what the hey. So I'll just go ahead and with the uh, presentation that I uh, created for you guys. We're very excited to have you. Thank you so much. I'm really happy sure. to see you. Yeah, so um, yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe we'll uh, – do you want to give like a real quick um... – uh, rundown of who you are, just in case somebody lands on this that doesn't know. I know most of us here uh, know know for sure, but um, 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, I mean, uh, I mean, I have a website that, uh, I mean, uh, kind of a blog that I started like years ago. I mean, I've been kind of like writing on it off and on just to kind of see what kind of response I get. But uh, the website's called theani.com. Uh, I mean, I've been, it's not, I haven't really, really been writing full time. It's just like, you know, whenever I have some time and when I'm researching different uh, things and different subjects, uh, just kind of for my own edification, that I kind of share my thoughts with uh, other people. And then uh, I guess somehow uh, Tracy and I, uh, we got hooked up and we decided to write a book that uh, Sean is holding right now called uh, Baphomet, the, the Temple Mystery Unveiled, that uh, Tracy and I co-wrote, like, uh, I don't even know, she's in a while, I don't know, maybe four years ago, maybe, right, Tracy? <laughs> I think that was for the end of uh, 2014 is when it came out, so we wrote it during that year and the previous year. Okay, and, was, it, yeah. was it 2015, uh, something like that? I don't know, I think. I don't have the thing in front of me, but. I don't know. I don't even know. Jeez, it's just, it's just, I don't no, know. you guys, that, you guys sound like tried and true to authors when you say that. Someone says, oh, "I remember something you wrote," and they're like, "Oh, you really? Tell me all about it, because I don't remember." So that's just proof that you both write a lot, and that's awesome. So, <laughs> yeah, it's been a, kind of a, it's kind of like a side hobby, really. I mean, only I only do it when I have like free time, when I don't really feel like doing anything else. You know, I just like kind of stick to my own thing and. Uh, it's kind of like a it's like a side hobby of mine I've been doing for years, really. Uh, I mean, I always kind of like consider myself sort of a, a mystic, I guess, in, in a lot of ways. And uh, and then uh, you know, and then we uh, Tracy and I were talking. We we, we got to start talking, and the whole thing. And then somehow we decided to write a book about this, you know, this really mis mysterious and freaky figure, Baphomet, and you know. And then, uh, you know, history was made, I guess. No, it absolutely <laughs> well, it really was. was. It absolutely was. <laughs> and um, I look forward to uh, to watching the process continue. Um, I absolutely support you guys, uh, like, doing the second edition. I want to be involved. I'd love to make a huge, like, color plate uh, coffee table size uh, issue of this book. I think it's amazing because it's not um, – most things kind of have a pitch or a slant. And I would say that you guys succeeded – in presenting what I call the encyclopedic view of Baphomet and a, a good chunk of the Grail mystery, um, you know, like it's I I use the one on my phone um, like a reference book, the one that I can search, you know, with uh, with my with my smartphone. I told you like, hmm, I wonder what the the Baphomet book says because there's so much that you guys manage to combine and get together that it's it, to me it's a reference book. It's it generates leads. Oh, for sure. I mean, there's a lot of uh, connections that it all kind of intertwines with one another. I mean, the information that we put in that book was like so dense that uh, I mean, I'm kind of blown away that we managed to, to actually write this thing. Just like, wow, like, like what happened? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I actually wrote this thing? I know. <laughs> you know? Well, you guys, I, you I, I use it as a curse. reference book, too. I mean, I keep going back to our book to... Um, to remind myself of things that, you know, I need to write about in, in things that I'm working on now. And, you know, the reason why we have to go back to our own book is because it isn't in any other book. So that's right. right. But, and I also, I was want to point out to people that this, this website, I mean, that's, I saw your work on this website, the aoni.com. And that's how I knew you would be the perfect person to help me write that book. And there's so many amazing things on this Website guys, you got to go. Uh, you're Simon Ma Magus. How do you how do you like to pronounce it? Magus or Ma Magus or Magus or what? Oh, I just say Simon Magus. I mean, or Simon the Magician. Yeah, I mean, uh, I started writing about th that guy. Uh, <laughs> to be perfectly honest, it was like a uh, internet uh, Facebook disagreement with a few other people. So I decided to like write a whole thing just just prove their points, like just prove their whole. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, hate, hatred against my what I was saying. So, <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, okay, you know, f you guys. And so I'm gonna write this whole thing. So those, just for everything that you say. So I mean, that's <laughs> really that's <laughs> awesome. Once more out of really out of like uh, despite them. <laughs> to be very honest. <laughs> no, good. Yeah, that's. A, I've got a buddy who start who who started a huge website the same way, Alex. So I guess it's that's pretty common actually. So. 
And I yeah, I, mean, I started uh, with the website, I think it was back in, not even now, God, it's been years now, like 2011 maybe. And uh, I was, I think I was writing about Nietzsche at the time when I was uh, uh, reading a lot about him. And then, uh, and then I started to get into other uh, esoteric and occult subjects that I was reading at the time. And then uh, somehow then I decided to write about uh, this figure Baphomet and, you know, and then kind of everything kind of like unfolded from there, you know? So, you know, of course, you know, Baphomet is a, is a figure that uh, you see in uh, occultism and Satanism and the OTO and that sort of thing. But, uh, but really, I mean, kind of, but the figure sort of connects to like, so much that I mean, just this, I'm still just trying to like wrap my head around it, you know. It's like it's just so much uh, information that we Tracy and I managed to unravel, I guess, you know. Yeah. But, uh, but all kind of, I think uh, I think Tracy and I kind of figured out that uh, definitely connects to uh, get the Yazidis uh, Milotas figure, uh, the serpent from Gen Genesis. Uh, Hermes, in a way, for sure. Uh, you name it. I mean, it's all, it's all, we're all over the place in that book. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a trip. Uh, yeah, for sure. So, so what are you working on now? Yeah, so I'm writing a book uh, that really, I mean, it has very too little to do with Bob. I'm not really. Uh, mm. uh, well, I mean, I guess I maybe mentioned him like maybe once or twice in the book. Or I do reference our book that we wrote, Tracy, uh, a, a few things here and there. But uh, but the book is called The Sun Lady in Veil. So I was, I was writing about uh, the figure of the sun lady that you see in Revelation 12, about, you know, this woman flows with the sun, with the moon under her feet. And then you have this great dragon that's, like, pursuing her and wants to eat her and her child, her male child. But, uh, and then, uh, then you have like, you know, Michael, the archangel who defends her against, uh, the great dragon, the devil and his angels. And so there's like this great war in heaven, war in heaven, I should say. And then they're, you know, they're cast out of heaven because it really, there's, there's really actually three falls of the devil, by the way, but I, which I get into the whole, in the book, uh, but essentially uh, she represents definitely the well, sun lady that is she represents various figures uh throughout the bible and in other uh figures in mythology as well they find in uh in greek mythology roman mythology uh jewish mythology for sure absolutely uh sumerian stuff babylonian i mean egyptian i mean the thing goes on and on and on it's just like I was just kind of blown away at how many connections I was able to unravel from this whole thing. So, I mean, I am uh, writing right now the book, but I am almost done with it. Um, I'm close to being finished with it. It's just a few things I need to kind of double check here, but I think I'm like maybe 95%. That's awesome. The book right now. <laughs> Alex, you said, you said the mystery, yeah. the mystery of the sun lady unveiled is the title, right? Is that, Oh, it's just called the Sun Lady Unveiled. The Sun Lady Unveiled. Okay, I just want people yeah, to be able like to definitely a, just to make it hear the title clearly. Yeah, because I'm stoked. I'm stoked. I love your work. Um, and if you haven't landed on Aeon Eye, folks, get ready for an extensive and uh, cited and referenced um, work. You know, I don't know. Uh, I I remember seeing a picture of you with the uh, with graduation clothes on, and I don't know what you did, but. Um, Alex's writing is very academic, but still very approachable. You know, it's not like a chunked up blog where it's just him ranting off of his head. Very linear, very organized, very thorough. And so I'm really stoked to, to see this, uh, whatever you're pulling out of the book of Revelation and that. Because that scripture, since I was a little kid, always stuck in my head, you know, of the woman giving birth. Uh, you know, of course, you kind of imagine it in, in the sky or whatever, and then the dragon being poised to swallow the child. I, you know, I remember from from being like thirteen, like, "Whoa, this is trippy," you know. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, that whole story uh, does definitely connect to uh, many other accounts of the Bible, for sure. I mean, 
you have uh, the story in Job of uh, Yahweh battling uh, Leviathan, right? Right. So that definitely connects to uh, Michael and the devil battling each other. And then you have, uh, the, I think it was uh, his name is uh, Hadad, uh, Baal Hadad. He's in a uh, Canaanite and Sumerian myth. And he battles also another, uh, I think it's Yam, I think. He's like sort of like a, also a Leviathan figure. So I kind of connect with all of these different mythologies. And uh, I mean, there's just so many different correspondences that I was just kind of, kind of blew my mind of how many, how much research I was able to unravel here that I don't, I don't really think anybody has really done really on this very subject. I mean, yes, there's definitely research on uh, the book of Revelation for sure. I mean, I won't deny that. However, uh, the, the amount of research that I've done though, I think where I kind of cannot just connect just, just biblical stuff. I mean, connect the Sumerian, Babylonian, uh, Greek mythology, Roman stuff. Uh, you know, and of course, you look at the, the Gnostic myths, even like, you know, more traditional religions, like, you know, Eastern you know, Orthodox or Catholicism, it all kind of like gels together. <laughs> and somehow I kind of made it work somehow. I don't know how, but I mean, but it took me a while to figure it out. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm curious. To, uh, I try to try to make sense. I mean, I, I cite everything, so I'm not like, you know, people like, you know, Blavatsky, where she, you know, she's all over the place and, you know, just kind of just like, you know, puts everything kind of ma- mishmashes together and everything. So I try to make make it seem very, you know, logical, coherent as much as I can. So, so is this <laughs> but, uh, is this what uh, is is this what got you uh, kind of stepping off onto Melchizedek to the side of it? Is it just the the work on this book? And it just, I mean, I assume you know, obviously Melchizedek ties right into all of that, but. I'm I'm pretty yeah. um, excited to see uh, what you found, because he's another character. It's like you to me. You and Tracy are both people that go find something that lots of people are interested in, but no one's doing, no one's done the bulk of the work, and then just hunker down and do it. So that's what makes me stoked. So. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, not, not, yeah, I mean, I did a uh, this presentation for you guys, really. I mean, I want to do a presentation for my. YouTube channel, but I just haven't really had a chance to even really do anything. It's just I've been so busy with uh, other stuff like work and my personal life and girls or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, right, so I just I did decide to uh, make uh, a nice presentation for you guys to present here. Uh, so the presentation is called the Mel cheese deck code. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't really figure out any other title really. So I just went with that. Just, I don't know. No, I mean, perfect. Kind of like the Vinci code kind of <laughs> nonsense, but I mean, but you know, just make it better than that. But <laughs> <laughs> so Sounds great. Uh, yeah. So let me see if I can share it here real quick. Uh, let's see. Um, one second. Share screen. There we go. Do you guys see it? Yep, there it comes. And I'm just, uh, I'm going to adjust just a little bit on my end to make sure it looks good. Oh, were you going to do the, I know before that you presented it. Are you, are you going to present it? I want to make sure not to accidentally get any like tabs of your browser or anything that might be. Oh, no, I'm just sharing the actual uh, material now. So, I mean, I mean, it's I fine. Do you don't have anything embarrassing or whatever. No, no, yeah, I'm not, I just, uh, there, I just want to make sure everyone can see it. I'm going to take me and Jim out of the shot here, so we just have the, you know, I'm going to bring this back. Bear with us here, folks. I want to get this blown up so you guys can see it. It's a little bit better. So, what do you think, Jim, like that? Is Maybe that, a little bigger. I'm going to try and make there it just one, one more time, a little bit bigger. So this is kind of like, uh, cool. I've right, never actually done this kind of thing before, but let me see if I can, how do I pause? Oh, there we go. I can pause it. There we go. Cool. So I don't know if do you guys see it. Yep. That should be uh, that should be displaying. And, um, I that just took good. mine and Jim's thumbnails out so that the whole screen is just, uh, whatever you've compiled. So, okay. Okay. Uh, do you see it now? Yes. Yes. 
Okay. Yeah. So uh, the uh, presentation is called the Melchizedek Code: Priests, Paralemptors, and Psychopomps. Now, I know Tracy and I did a show. Well, I mean, we did a conversation like a while back, and I decided to like post it on my YouTube. But uh, we were talking about this very subject actually, and uh, we were discussing about different uh, character or different. Uh, terminology that you don't really see too much very often like paralemptor for example yeah or uh, <laughs> it's not that a is very, a new vocabulary uh, word yeah it's not a very common uh term that you see but uh i mean priest and psychopomp is a little more uh recognizable though uh which i'll get to in a second here uh so let's see here so here we see uh melchizedek uh you know he's blessing and consecrating Abraham. And of course, you know, it says, there's a quote here from Hebrews that, you know, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. And I do get into Melchizedek in the book for sure. And I'm quite in depth here. <clears throat> so who is Melchizedek? Uh, in a nutshell, he is a priest king that you see in Genesis 14, and he is the priest king of El Elyon, or the Most High God, who uh, uh, Abraham also worships. But uh, in a nutshell, uh, he is basically the guy that blesses him, blesses um, Abraham. And the whole story of Abraham you know, birthing this uh, this new race, you know, the, the Jewish people, uh, comes from Melchizedek. So he's sort of like, well, he is compared basically as sort of like a, a great angel or a second angel by a lot of other scholars like uh, Margaret Barker. Right, okay. And uh, Margaret Barker, she's, uh, she's also another scholar here, but she's done a lot of work on this very subject as well. But she's done a lot of work on uh, temple theology. But uh, basically, Melchizedek, he's the, the first king of Jerusalem. And he is uh, the first high priest that was ever, you know, ever even manifested on earth. And he's also responsible for uh, initiating the ritual of the Eucharist. As well yeah. as the, yeah. the, actually the Holy Grail as well. I was kind of, well, I mean, it does fit, but I was kind of uh, not surprised, but I was like, hmm, that's, there's just an interesting connection there when I found that out. Uh, now, was it, was, were you saying like that the, the cup uh, that he's using in that ritual is the original Grail or that there's a tradition that that's the case? Yeah, I, did, I kind of figured out how the whole uh, Holy Grail mythos actually originates with him, actually, and I talk about it in the book. Wow. Yeah. And uh, he's basically also the first king of Jerusalem long before, long before King David and long before uh, Aaron, too. So he's basically the guy that uh, created the first temple. And uh, first temple Judaism was... Uh, very different from the Second Temple Judaism that, you, that we will see in a moment here. Now, uh, Melchizedek, uh, he's also mentioned in Hebrews. Uh, so we also learned that, you know, Jesus is, uh, is also uh, considered to be in the order of Melchizedek as a high priest as well. So he's, so Jesus is considered sort of like, you know, he's part of the, not only like the bloodline, but he also, uh, he's sort of like the, the manifestation or the prophecy of Melchizedek. So Melchizedek sort of like the, the shadow of things to come, right? So he's a, the, so Jesus would be the, like the fulfillment of all the Old Testament prophecies. Uh, well, according to the Christians, on that case, right? Right. Is it, is it kind of like um, an apostolic succession, like how all the Catholic priests say that they're 
they have an anointing that's been passed down from Peter? Is it kind of like yeah, that? It's something like that for sure. And so I would say, yeah, I think that's actually a good case to make that uh, Melchizedek would be considered the first high priest. And he is also a figure that is also connects to not only in Christianity, but also Gnosticism, the, that, you know, that uh, uh, heresy that uh, a lot of the church fathers like to, you know, uh, dish out against. <laughs> yeah, I, that's something I always found... Uh... I find it fascinating about Melchizedek and Enoch both that a lot of the heretical texts kind of lean on these guys more or reference them more. And so to me, it's kind of like a chink in the canonical armor, if that makes sense. You know, it's like, well, if, if, the, if they're referencing Enoch or Melchizedek in the New Testament, then if you're going to push a, a lot of the stuff away from it and say that it's heresy, it makes me wonder... Why you know where that's so? Yeah, and I mean we'll get to all that kind of stuff uh, later on for yeah, sure. For sure. Uh, oops, let me see. Oh, so oh, he's also mentioned in uh, the uh, wisdom of Solomon as well, which we'll get to. So now I tried to figure out uh, what Melchizedek actually means. So it, it means basically roughly my angel or also justice and righteousness. But uh, he also connects in a Kabbalistic sense to uh, the Sephira Chesed, or mercy. Hmm. And now there's a, there's a guy, he's a researcher, his name is Emmanuel Velikovsky. And he connected uh, Melchizedek as a priest for Jupiter. And I thought, I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, I've never that. heard of that. Yeah. So, and the reason why he says that is because Z Zedek actually means Jupiter. <laughs> wow, so it's in his name almost. Yeah. So... Is it okay? So Zedek is is that the same word as Zadok? Like there's a I know there's a kind of priest that, that they had in uh, Israel that they were called Zadoks, right? Yeah, I think that was in Second Temple Judaism. But yeah, there's uh, definitely connections to that as well. I mean, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't talk about it, but uh, but yeah, Zadok uh, is a very important figure in Judaism. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, and of course, Zedek also means righteous needs peace, but it but does connect to Jupiter. And of course, Zadok also means righteousness and to be justified, I guess, as a sort of a high priest. And so you see that, I think, I think in, in First Chronicles, I believe, that you, that you see that uh, term. And of course, it's the first temple in the... Uh, and Judaism was uh, created by King Solomon, and King Solomon could be seen as also a Melchizedek too. So he's so he's really just more like a, a title, really. You know, it's not really a like a specific name, but it's just kind of like Jesus Christ. I mean, Jesus Christ is also just really a title. I mean, it just means anointed one, and of mm. course, Jesus means you know God saves. Yahweh says, and we'll get to all that. And I also uh, uh, I break everything down in my book too. So I very much wrestle with all these different issues that uh, I've been wrestling for all my life. So I try to I try to uh, put everything, all my thoughts and all my research from uh, my website, and just kind of connect it all as sort of like. A, a culmination, I guess, of my research. Like, I think that's what I really consider that book to be. And I mean, whenever I publish it, I really don't know when that will be. But that, I guess, I guess that could be my 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 last parting gift for the world. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I think I think you'll get it uh, published sooner than you think, Alex. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm almost done with it. Uh, it's just I had to uh, go back on one of the chapters and kind of rewrite it because I, I felt like there was more information that needed to be uh, researched and talked about there. But uh, so let's see. So what's the next screen here? All right. So Maltese deck, he's basically in uh, Judaism. He's uh, identified with the Sh with Shem, who was the son of Noah. However, this is debatable uh, because the non because it's we don't really see that information in the New Testament or the Dead Sea Scrolls. But uh, I do offer some links for people to check that out. So I mean, I think I'll just uh, give the the presentation to you guys. So or I mean, I'll just post it somewhere. I don't even know how. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll update. update uh, video. I'll update all the comment. I'll update all the stuff into the chat later after the show, like tomorrow or something. I'll, anything that we want in there for links, I'll drop it in there for sure. So. Sure, I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, I I couldn't really explain all the whole connections there. It's just, it's just too much to really go and get into it now, but. Yeah, uh, no, I want this to be free flowing, and we if people want to dive in hard, they can get they, they can get into the link and start uh, following stuff back to citations and everything. I want you to be able to to give us your insight, you know, off the top of your head. That's uh, this is going great so far. I'm I'm happy. Sure, yeah, and then he's also Melchizedek is also mentioned, and not surprisingly, in the Book of Enoch, the second Book of Enoch. <laughs> So he's actually also born of a virgin in that text. And his mother's name is the da da Sophanium. That's <laughs> odd, like, hmm. Sophanium. <laughs> so, and he's also the, the wife of the priest of Ner, who is the brother of Noah. And he's uh, conceived without, uh, you know, physical intercourse, like in Mary with Jesus. Now, uh, of course, Sophanim uh, relates to the wisdom goddess of Kfia. And also in that text, it says that uh, Melchizedek was born with a... Actually, yeah, she was. he was born and it looked like a three-year-old child, and he began to speak immediately. So that was interesting when I found that out. Yeah, was that, was that a part for Enoch? The seal of the holy priesthood on his chest. And we'll see that in a minute. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and it connects to everything that also Tracy's been talking about too here. Oops. Whoop. Hold on. Let me go back. So you said he was he was born and could immediately talk, and he had the the seal of the priesthood on his chest. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> So you have uh, in the second Enoch, you have uh, Noah and Ner, and they say that uh, basically God blessed them, their bloodline, with this priest king, Melchizedek, and, uh, and they gave him like these garments of the priesthood, and they gave him uh, bread to eat, and he ate it, and then he became Melchizedek. And also in that text, it says that... Uh, uh, the Lord had commanded the Archangel Gabriel to take uh, Melchizedek and place him in, in back in Eden. I thought I was like, whoa, that was interesting. Yeah, so I actually took uh, Melchizedek back to Eden. And so he may, so uh, he, he would become sort of like a high priest in Eden after the flood. This is all after the flood, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I don't remember anybody <laughs> ever getting back into the garden. That's really interesting. So that's kind of like uh, e Enoch himself being taken up into heaven without dying, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. So, and uh, and I do connect uh, Enoch with Melchizedek in the book, and I was also surprised to find out that Melchizedek also connects to uh, other figures, not, not just in the Bible. You see, also he connects to uh, Zoroaster too, and uh, and I also make that case in the book. Mm -hmm. Like that they might actually be the same historical figure? figure yeah. <laughs> I was like, whoa, that's so that kind of blew me away when I found that out. That's amazing. But, you know, if you think about, like, uh, how there's so there's other Z words that seem so different from, 
from Zoroaster, but are considered the same. Like, I always thought it was weird, like uh, Nietzsche's book, Z Thus Spake Zarathustra, yeah. and Zarathustra is supposed to be the same as the word that I just said, uh, the word you were saying too, yeah, Zoroaster. Yeah. So it's like, uh, so I just thought, like, why? You, I always thought, why are these two words the same, or how could they be the same? Apparently, they are. So if we're throwing this in there too, it just it feels like, okay, well, that's normal. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a word that starts with Z, and it can have all sorts yeah, of different no, permutations. Zadok, Zoroaster, yeah, I think, uh, I think the case can definitely be made. Yeah, I'll you... stop interrupting so much. No, it's a, I, oh, didn't, that's okay. I didn't know that. That's interesting. I didn't know that Zarathustra and Zoaster are the same. So that's... Uh... Yeah. So, I mean, the whole story really just begins with this whole war of the kings. They see in Genesis. And, uh, I mean, I, I want to read all this, but basically, in a nutshell, uh, there was a, a war between uh, Abram and uh, Kedora Lamor, <laughs> I can't really pronounce his name. I still can't pronounce his name. But uh, there was a whole war between these two figures. And uh, basically, uh, Abram, uh, he uh, won the war. And then, uh, and then I think it was actually connected to his nephew, Lot. But, uh, but after the war, he uh, he actually uh, returned from his victory over uh, his enemy, and he went to uh, meet uh, Melchizedek, and then he blessed him, and then he became like uh, the consecrated heir of Melchizedek, basically. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, Mel, you know, G G and Genesis fourteen is just pretty much all about you know Yahweh. Uh, creating a covenant with uh, not not just with uh, Melchizedek, but also with Abram, and then Abram becomes Abraham. So, it's that ham word there. <laughs> yeah, hey, that is so perfect considering <laughs> yeah, we're, some of the other things that we're going to be dealing with yeah, today. We're going to name this oh, pig okay. later. <laughs> so. <laughs> we have a pig naming contest, so and they all, almost all the the uh, entries have have this uh, ham thing yeah emphasized in them. So. It's funny. So just as oh, a quick, as a quick so aside, contest again? <laughs> um, well, uh, but we've got a, it's the year of the pig in case you didn't know, Alex, uh, if you look at any uh -huh. of the Chinese uh, astrology. So, um, Oh really? I didn't even know yeah, that. I've been seeing it all over Twitter and stuff. So kind of just for fun, like I went and, um, uh, me and my girlfriend bought a bunch of little piggy banks and I bought one for my mom and then, uh, my girlfriend found an extra one and I thought, well, we can use this to collect money for the stuff that we want to do on picture show with Tracy and with people like you and we'll, um, we'll fill it up, but we need to name it first. So we've had people brainstorming names on, uh, the discord server and we've got a whole list of names. Tracy tried to make it into a, um, to a clickable survey, but I'm not sure if it worked, but... Sometime later, probably when you're uh, drifting off to dreamland, we'll be uh, having a Rasha's debate about which name is going to win. And then my goal is to get the guy who is singing the songs at the beginning of the show, my brother, if I can, to get him to come over and draw like with a Sharpie or something on the pig live and maybe even give him his name onto his porcelain skin. <laughs> Oh, so okay. we okay. That should be the anointing of the pig, kind of like we were talking about anointing him with the 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 fat of our enemies. But yeah. instead, yeah. We could have that be the anointing, and then he can maybe like we could change his name and add the ham in, just like Abraham did. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. You have like a non ham name, and then then you anoint him and 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 add that special syllable in there. I agree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I think anyway, I, we're not trying to veer you off course. We don't no, mean to. That. Uh, we're gonna have to make a, a whole on. show about God changing names. Or all right, I will. I'll throw down the gauntlet to to you two writers. You guys have got me totally inspired to start writing again. Just so you know. But if you want to um, make like a short series of how many times God changed somebody's name and why we think He did it, we could probably have some fun. Write some short articles, you know, not long ones, short ones. Like here's here's the first time God changed somebody's name, et cetera, et cetera. So it's always been fascinating to me. God changed like so Paul, 
uh, off the top of my head, there was at least three or four more. So I, I know you guys know because you're obsessed with this stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I, it took me a while to re connect all this research together, but it's uh, it, will, it will eventually be presentable uh, soon. <laughs> Let's just put that one. Uh, so let's see. Oh, and of course, all the whole tithing concept does connect back to, of course, Nalji Zach and Abraham. Uh, yeah, this that was the first time a tithe was paid. Yeah. Cool. I mean, I guess it's good to be a uh, priest king, right? I mean, I mean, they're rich paying you <laughs> tenth of the goods. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to be the king, I guess. <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, depending on who, what. King you are, I guess. <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> uh, so uh, this connects to the priestly bloodlines. Uh, so I was saying in the book, well, this is taken from my book here. So it just says that you know the world and ecclesiastical themes uh, with the bread and wine, and the wine represents the uh, nobility, and the bread representing the priesthood. So uh, some of the blessings of the Old Testament were not given lightly, but can never be taken back, much like the consecration of today. So Melchizedek, he acknowledges and endorses uh, Abraham, so proclaiming him a priest and king as well. So he, so in a way, uh, because, you know, Abraham gives him money, he blesses him. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of so, that, that's why he's blessed because he gave him money. <laughs> I know it's, well, it's not uh, terrible, but you know, just just the way it is. <laughs> yeah, nothing's the way it changed. Always yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so, what do you mean by it can't be taken back? So, in other words, like if someone's blessed, then no matter what they do, then they're already they're just still blessed. Well, I mean, at least from the standpoint of the priest king, uh, the priest king can't take back that consecration or blessing. Even no matter what they do. I mean, they can, like, you know, murder somebody or, I don't know, I don't know but, I mean, but there's still okay. the blessing still there. We're seeing, speaking of murder, it looks like this little dog is about to be killed on an altar or something. <laughs> what's what's yeah. going on here? Yeah, so this is uh, the sacrifice of, well, it's really, it's a mosaic that's taken from uh, a temple here in Italy uh, from the 6th century, actually. But it's, it's a sacrifice of Melchizedek, so you have Melchizedek and you have Abraham and Abel. And of course, well, it's not really a dog, it's really the lamb. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's a very tiny lamb. <laughs> It's a tiny lamb who's about to be uh, killed. Uh, and Mel Melchizedek looks way too happy about that. Yeah. <laughs> like, ooh, lamb chops ooh, tonight. Lamb. lamb chops tonight, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so you have, Let's yeah, see. so you have, uh, so you have this, the guy, uh, so I'm not sure who's holding that lamb, but uh, we'll, we'll get to explanation here. <clears throat> So let's see. Is that is that child being offered as well, or is he just there? Oh, I think he's just there. But you know, in my book, he's kind I of do, being pushed forward. I do really. actually, yeah. Yeah. huh? He is kind it of looks it looks like he's, he's kind of being pushed forward. Yeah. <laughs> well, that would be look. I mean, if he he blessed Abraham, who did the that the very thing to his yeah. own son. Yeah, that's yeah. the. Here we go with Twyman's rash speculations. Go okay, Tracy I said it stops them. It's like, it's like the whole story of Abraham and Isaac and like, you know, him, Abraham sacrificing his son and and then Yahweh sending his angels to start, just to stop the sacrifice at the last minute. I mean, I always found that very kind of strange to me. Yeah. And then, uh, and then I always, and then I do get into all that in the book too. And then I, I do also get into the subject into you know the uh, reprehensible subject of uh, child sacrifice in the book as well well uh, yeah i mean i get to very heavy, heavy subjects in this book and uh and but it, it all makes sense in the end here uh yeah but well, i mean uh i mean i don't want to spoil anything but i do talk about that subject too and it kind of depressed me when i was reading of course yeah it's heavy <laughs> 
Uh, so anyway, let's go further here. <laughs> okay, so here's a kind of an explanation of uh, that said that picture here. So you have a uh, Melchizedek deck, the seal Melchizedek deck, and the uh, at the altar here. There's like a eighth pointed star, and we have Abel who offers a lamb. Okay, so that's what it is. So Abel offers a lamb as Melchizedek gently pushes Isaac forward. So yeah, I'll go. Oh, so Tracy's wow. right. So they say, yeah, she's definitely right. Huh. So you have the hand of God who reaches down the sacred meaning to the red veils adorning the, the golden gamaria on the both sides. So the theme of the great sacrifice of Christ, which brings together the righteous prophets from the past as well as the four corners of the present world, thereby uniting all time and space together in the sacred space of the altar on the uh, holy of holies. Wow. So, yeah. So yeah, go ahead. That's Abel is wearing the Tarzan suit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Wow. And 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 Isaac looks um, way too happy about it too. Yeah. Uh, or I. No. <laughs> Can you die for God? Yeah. No. I know. Here I am, God. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. Kill me. But no, no, no. It's like just kidding. <laughs> Isaac no, is that's a, I remember that from being like a, a kid in church too, Alex. Like, like what? Like you can't mess with yeah, kids' no, heads I, like I just that. Like that, that started to be very strange. Yeah. I know. Even in Islam, they also celebrate that story too with the the carving. You know, you they they carry kids and they. I don't know. They cut a something on their forehead or whatever. I think that's like a bloodletting kind of ritual, I guess. Oh wow! I didn't know that. <laughs> But they do a switcheroo, like they they say it was the other guy who got killed uh -huh. or yeah. was about to get be killed. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's we're all very weird, but I mean, I mean the Bible. I mean, it's just so many weird stories in that book that I mean, it's just <laughs> kind of beggars of mind, <laughs> beggars of belief. <laughs> so uh, okay, so you have uh, the uh, Malachistic seal. So that's very much. Uh, important in the uh, what is it? The Mormons, the Mormon Church. So you have, I mean, they're obsessed with cheese stick, really. Yeah, yeah. And then you have, of course, you know, there's a font there that uh, infants are uh, baptized in. And of course, there's a Catholic Church in Ecuador that also has this uh, eight-pointed star. And of course, that eight point star not only connects to Melchizedek, deck, but also to Ishtar, which we will talk Whoa. about. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that's the part that swept way up under the rug, I'm sure, right? Then you have uh, another star here, an eight point star. Uh, there's a signet of Melchizedek, and I mean, I was going to do more research on this whole thing, the 47 problem of, of the Ecclesiad, but I mean, I guess people can do their own research on, research on this, but I just haven't really had a chance to really research this, the subject by itself, but um, uh, maybe I'll give some food for, for now, thought. Which, which problem of Euclid was it? Because I know we got some math nerds in the chat. The 47th problem of the Euclid, Euclid okay. whatever it is. The 47th problem of Euclid is uh, very important to the Freemasons, and they um, use it as one of their symbols, basically. And I've never seen it just, I've never seen it associated with this uh, eight pointed star before, but usually there's, a, there's other um, representations of the, the angles that they're talking about here. The right angles, um, and the and that's sort of a symbol used by Freemasons for something. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, I mean, also you also see that uh, star in the movie uh, Eyes Wide Shut. Yeah. Yeah, there's a scene where uh, Nicole Kidman is uh, hanging out with this, some old guy, and then uh, there's like a Christmas decoration of the eight-pointed star, you know? Hmm. And of yeah, course, I remember that. Yeah, it does connect to, uh, and of course, you know, Mary worship and Theotokos worship. Uh, I mean, 
I mean, <laughs> it's going to piss a lot of people, but yes, it does indeed connect to uh, Venus worship and Ishtar and Inanna, yes. <laughs> Easter worship. Yes, <clears throat> the Easter worshipers of Hillary, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, well, we only have Wednesday worshipers here on Picture Show. We're all yeah, yeah, Wednesday yeah. worshipers. You know, you know, I saw a documentary about a mega brothel in, I think, Germany, and they had the that eight-pointed star all over inside the brothel. Wow. Hmm. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. you know, well, she's the... the star... right, go ahead, Tracy. You say it. You're, I'm sure you're about to say the same thing, yeah. Yeah, Ishtar, of course, was the, the patron goddess of uh, prostitution. <laughs> <laughs> well, it makes sense. And, uh, and war. So the both, you know, fucking and killing. So, yeah. You know. Nothing's changed, unfortunately. <laughs> Sex and death. Uh, so let's see. This next screen here. Let's slide. Okay, so then here's a... Uh, uh, yeah, there's uh, eight pointed stars. Let me see that in... A lot of uh, uh, overt use in uh, Judaism and in, of course, uh, Mormonism. Uh, and so, the Templars. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I do talk about the Templars briefly in the book. I don't really go into it in depth, but I mean, I mentioned them a little bit. Uh, but they also do talk about. Well, you know, if you remember, uh, what's his name again? So we had, didn't we read, uh, uh, I think we interviewed that guy. Uh, what's his name again? Harrison, right? He was talking about Abraxas and, and the Templars. Yeah. 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 So, that, like, yeah, yeah. so we definitely talk about, I th oh, I do, um, you know, I mentioned like you know, briefly about it, but it's all connected for sure. <laughs> Let's put it that way. And I know another guy, his name is uh, Jesus, and he sent me a bunch of links about uh, Abraxas, but I just didn't really get a chance to really uh, read it in depth. But uh, he, there's a whole uh, invocation to Abraxas that uh, I thought found was really interesting. So I'm, I'll probably just send it to you, Tracy. So let's see what okay. you can oh. Thank you. <clears throat> um, so let's see. Is that a necktie in there? Yeah, look, yeah, there's a, there's like this tie, yeah, like, I guess there, there are Mormons who wear <laughs> the, the seal of Ishtar on their nectars. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's pretty nuts. Sorry, I'm looking, I'm watching the show, so I didn't, I didn't realize you had changed slides there, I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay, no, so th then you have, uh, uh, well, there's the six point star, of course, that's the seal of Solomon. But this is actually taken from the Jewish Bible, the, Lin the Leningrad Codex. And the Leningrad Codex is actually the oldest Bible that is known to men, by the way. Wow. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'll just read like a note here. It just says, this is the carpet page or cover of the oldest known Jewish scripture, biblical studies. Biblical studies teacher, our hold stay blogs about it. He says that the calligraphic, the calligraphic drawing of the maiden of shield of David set aside an eight-point star is from the Leningrad Codex, the com oldest complete manuscript of the Hebrew Bible in Hebrew uh, using the Masoretic text and the Tiberian vocalization. It is internally dated from the 10th century, actually. Which is funny, which is weird. The, the oldest Bible comes from the 10th century. Don't you find that kind of weird? <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, we did a show last week on a similar subject with a cool cat named uh, Stephen Soros, and you should definitely check it out, man, jumping into the chronology, timeline, questioning, and all that. Yeah, and I always found that really weird. And uh, I, mean, I mean, honestly, I haven't really got a chance to actually watch it, but I know he has some really, I'm sure he has some interesting things to say. Yeah, and I'd say it's really far out. Uh, it seems like the more um, the more digging that gets done into these uh, monotheistic Abrahamic gods, the more we find their wives have been quietly cut out of all of the photo albums, and their names have been deleted from the register. You know, like uh, like they've yeah. all they've all got female counterparts. 
Because you hear that picture you just put up, um, you've got the most famous star there, you know, uh, the Star of David, and it's inside, once again, like you said, it's essentially inside the Seal of Ishtar, you know. Yeah. That's weird, huh? Yeah, that's a trip. <laughs> uh, and also, the eight-pointed star also shows up as a logo. Of, I think it's for, like, a Freemasonic magazine. I think it was actually published back in 1881. I think it was called the uh, Ancient and Primitive Rite of Memphis and Miserium. It was published by Kenneth... Well, I mean, I'm not reading it from the actual uh, thing here, but I mean, I'm just reading my notes here. So it says here, it's from Kenneth R.H. Mac McKenzie, but uh, it was driven by John Yarker. And John Yarker, he's a guy who also wrote a book about uh, these ancient mystery rites. And I think uh, Tracy, and, oh, well, I, at least I quoted it from you know, in the back on that book. And John Yarker is uh, sort of like a, expert on mystery of religions mm -hmm. sort of thing. but uh i mean basically i mean there's this figure i mean there's a an egg and you have two wings but it connects to the figure uh nef who was an egyptian deity he's basically regarded as the first emanation of uh the supreme god he's like the good genius or the demiurge he's like kind of the reason or the architect of the universe. Uh, so he's kind of like uh, he can he can he can well, I can't even talk right now. He can be compared to the Orphic uh, uh, egg that uh, Fanes Fane is or Mithras uh, emerges from, right? And, yeah, I've I've heard also like the Neph is the considered equivalent to a Gatho demon. Yeah. So yeah. It's yeah, like a yeah. luck symbol. Yeah, I mean, like, um, I mean, I got a gotho daemon. He's like sort of like a uh, a spirit that rules over not just like mystery temples, but uh, he's also like considered like the the guardian uh, spirit of even families too. I thought that, I thought that was interesting too. Um, but of course, you know, he's considered more like a positive figure, like a serpent entity. But of course, you know, this is in paganism. And of course, that's reversed in Judaism, where he's really more seen as a negative figure. Hmm. Uh, Genesis. But I mean, at the same time, though, I mean, isn't Jesus compared to like the bronze serpent in John? So absolutely. So he's I... compared as sort of like uh, he's a positive serpent <laughs> as opposed to, uh, you know, the evil serpent in Genesis that cause the fall of uh, Adam and Eve. I mean, I mean, I get to all that in the book. Uh, I mean, it's just it's just so much information that I unearthed here that kind of blew my mind here. <clears throat> and uh, let's see. Uh, let's see what else. So he's so also. Did you yeah. say Neff? Neff was uh, a was Neff a male character or female or androgynous? You said it was the first emanation from. The Ein Sof Or, or from the Uncreated Light, or uh... yeah, I mean he's like uh, he he. I guess he, you can compare this figure to Christ. I guess like an well, at least in the the Gnostic analogy as the Logos, the or the Christos. He's like you know Christ is the uh, one of the emanations that that descends from the Pleroma uh, or the uh, the first father and. Uh, Barbolo, which we'll get into in a Yeah, second. okay, yeah. Uh, let's see. And of course you have uh, this icon here of Christ. And uh, there's a sort of like a A-sided figure, really. Mm -hmm. It's an icon. Well, it's, a, it's an either or, Eastern Orthodox icon. And, uh, you, know, so, you know, I was going to an Eastern Orthodox church for a while there. Uh, but I think I haven't gone there recently. Well, because you know I did move to another place. But uh, but in that church, though, in the East Orthodox Church, they have all of these different icons and uh, symbologies that connect to uh, the seal, the eight-pointed star. So I was like, hmm, that's interesting. So yeah. and then uh, yeah, so this icon is called the Christ in Majesty, which dates from the 15th century or the 14th century, really. 
uh, it, it just it's Christ the Pantocrator, uh, which means you know he's like you know the most powerful and omnipotent entity in all of the universe. And so he's uh, surrounded by the oval mandorla and he with uh, two car squares that forms a octagonal star and the, the mandola the mandorla represents the heaven and earth heaven and so the Christ is placed in, outside the earthly realm of existence and then I'm just reading it word verbatim right here uh, it says uh, the octagon uh, represents the eighth day of creation by which Christ instituted the new order in the corners of the one square or four evangelists taking the gospel to the four corners of the world. And this, of course, also connects to the cherubim around the throne contained to, of, by the mandorla, which represents the world's angels. And of course, the four uh, cherubim are, of course, the, uh, you know, the man, the cherubim road with the man, the lion, the, the eagle and the bullhead angel that also connects to uh, the four Gospels, too, by uh, the Church Fathers, like Aaron and Annas. He uh, makes that connection first, really. <clears throat> um, what's, the, what's the eighth day of creation? I had no idea there was an eighth day of creation. Yeah, Sunday was actually created as the eighth day of creation, actually, yeah. So... I'm totally confused, but yeah, I'll no, take your it's crazy. It. But I mean, like, it, but Sunday was created like uh, sort of like the eighth day, like uh, like uh, like uh, Sunday. Sunday wasn't Sunday. really exactly the eighth day, but like it's sort of like a honorable <laughs> eighth day. It's like parody. <laughs> so like it was like there day. there a zero day or something at this at the beginning. I mean, how do you get? Uh, well, I don't know. I, I'm confused. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But it does connect to, uh, I mean, in Gnosticism, like the, the whole idea of the Agdawad. Yeah. And, uh, right. and uh, Sophia, who, who dwells in the Agdawad. This is exactly what And then also, also connects to Jesus about. with his name uh, connecting to 888. You can actually, all the church fathers make this connection where you can actually, in, in Gematria, you know, Jesus Christ equals eight eight eight. Wow. Yeah. So, and that's like the most like powerful number that you see in all of creation. So eight eight eight. eight. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember so. hearing that before. I I can't remember where, but yeah. Wow, you're blowing my mind. Yeah. And also, yeah, AAA basically, uh, of course, connects obviously to Christ, but basically, what they what well, the Church Fathers, like Irenaeus, he was saying that uh, the Gnostics uh, would have this habit of using gematria uh, in their own mysteries, I guess. But, then, and the, but basically, they figured out that uh, Christ was like the ultimate uh, number in all their calculations, I guess. Uh, oh, so yeah, wow. so this one, this is the image you see here, this is, uh, well, this is called, this is from the uh, Chartres Cathedral, which was built by the Knights Templar, by the way. This is where this, the Knights Templar comes in, and uh, this is, and they built many cathedrals across Europe, and this is, this is just one of them, and this is in uh, mm -hmm. France. And, uh, I mean, Gothic, uh, Gothic, Cathedral. Huh? Gothic Cathedral is like the one that just burned down. Yeah, I mean, well, hopefully it's not burned down now. I mean, I don't know who's behind all this. Maybe, I don't know, Satanist or something, but who knows? Straight but, flames. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, they're, they're definitely, I think they're definitely involved in the whole Notre Dame situation, the whole thing with uh, Sri Lanka, and then, you know, the Catholics that were all murdered. There. The Easter worshippers are murdered. The Easter word, yeah, yeah. The Easter, oof, why is it going backwards? Ew. Okay, so yeah, you have, uh, oh my God, what the hell? All right, let me go back. Okay, so you have uh, figures like, uh, you know, Abraham, or Chizdek, Moses, Samuel, and David. They're all depicted in uh, their this cathedral. I mean, yeah, I mean, these figures were very much important to uh, the Knights Templar, for sure. Which one is the, uh, the the guy that has the kid in front of him and they're both crossing their legs? Like the Templars just cross their legs? 
Uh, let's see. I think my or uh, uh, Abraham. Yeah, Abraham and Isaac. Hmm. Again. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting, huh? So uh, maybe the Dice Templar were after the order of Isaac and Abraham. I don't know. <laughs> Might be a connection there to the research there, Tracy. <laughs> well, yeah, there, there's pictures in the Hammer Perkstall stuff that's supposedly from the Templars of someone holding a kid in front of them just like that. And it, I always assumed that the kid is being about to be sacrificed and it matches right up with what we're being shown here. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, it, you know, it always blows my mind when I research this stuff. Like uh, every time I look up things up, it always blows my mind. So like even Ezekiel talks about, uh, well, the Israelites were involved in actually Moloch worship too at one point. Right. And uh, you know they would throw the the their the firstborn children to the flames of Molech, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and Molech can be uh, syncretized with Saturn, by the way, Kronos. Mm -hmm. So, and of course Kronos and or or Molech is also depicted as a bull-headed god with with horns, which can all, all connects to Bacchus, Dionysus, and obviously Baphomet. I mean they're all connected in some way but uh but in ezekiel 20 it says that uh that yahweh would pub would actually punish the israelites because they were disobedient to him so in his way of, of uh, punishing the israelites he uh, actually forced him to sacrifice the firstborn children to molech so he actually was the one who actually instituted the sacrifice so that uh, i thought that was also very uh disturbing <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. definitely yeah so I, I definitely talk about that in the book yeah rolling over the old testament stuff if you if people haven't done it i know it's hard to read the old testament uh straight through it's pretty easy to read the new testament but like there's so many references to to things that that we look at now as like the most shocking thing and the stuff that we want to fight against or that we're really shocked and horrified by but like the the gay death sex cults. I don't remember if it's in the book of Chronicles or the uh, the book of yeah. Judges or Numbers, but I remember it coming up again and again and again. You know, kingdom after kingdom that they're fighting against the the temple of you know of homosexual death cults, and then you take that and add the detail of like what you and Tracy have found, and it's just completely yeah. mind blowing. Like, oh my gosh. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, uh, when it comes to like you know homosexual death cults, I mean, I guess, I mean, uh, Tracy uh, tried to you know, we, I guess Tracy, Tracy and I uh, looked at that connection too with the Templars, and uh, I mean, I guess I guess there were some homosexual things going on there. Uh, I mean, I don't know if they really actually sacrificed children, but who knows? <laughs> uh, let's see. I mean, I think there's like a gay cult too, right? In, in Greece, I think mean, they were fall after like a uh, like a a giant dick, like a, a dick-headed. No, there's a god, well, Praprius, Praprius, right, Tracy? I think that was a Priapus. Priapus, yeah. that's his name. And he had like, like a giant dick, and he would like you know, rape everyone or something. <laughs> oh yeah, the, yeah. The <laughs> when you when you You're do like the the uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, he would be on the the shit list of uh, the Me Too movement, I guess. Sure. <laughs> he wouldn't run today. <laughs> now, Tracy, is that the same? Is that the same one where there's all the altars? Like, there's these phallic yeah. altars that you can like rape yourself with out in the woods or whatever. Yes. That's Priapus, right? Yeah, Priapus. He like a like a like like a ridiculously sized dick, and he would like rape like bitches and. Dudes left and right. I don't know. It was really, it's really gross. Whatever. <laughs> we can move on. <laughs> yeah. Right, let's just move on. <laughs> okay. So there's a uh, now the okay. So in ancient Babylon. Uh, so the eight point star uh, does connect to that, of course. It does connect to uh, Ishtar and Venus, and then. Uh, and of course, I mean, I, I trace all that to uh, 
you know, Ishtar worship, that sort of thing. And of course, there's a, let's see, yeah, there's an eight pointer star that you see above a priest king there. Yeah, I mean, it's all interconnects with everything here. And of course, and then I talk about Melchizedek and the stars. <clears throat> Because he does, there, there's also astrological connections to Melchizedek too. Uh, it connects to the star of Bethlehem. And then of course, it also connects to Christ because he's also considered the bright and morning star in Revelation uh, 22 and uh, Second Peter. And then uh, he's called a day star. So he's called also the morning star. So Melchizedek connects to all these, to all this. And uh, he basically, you know, in a way, you know, Melchizedek, he, uh, he heralds, you know, Christ, the Lord, of, you know, he's the son of God. And then uh, now uh, King James translators, they also pointed out that in uh, Malachi 4, 2, that, uh, that there's, a son of righteousness who actually has healing wings. Wow. Yeah. And then you have uh, this uh, emblem from Egypt that does connect indeed to uh, what Malachi 4 2 says. So, uh, and then, yeah, so he's basically, I, I guess you can consider Christ as, uh, as the son of. Uh, Righteousness, yeah. So he's the the one that rises, the you know the firstborn from the dead, mm -hmm. and he has you know healing wings. And of course, you know Christ does heal the blind and sick and the infirm. The Gospels, and then uh, and then I also connect you know Malachi with uh, Egyptians. How they of course it depicted uh, the the wings, the winged uh, Ra, the Egyptian sun god. And of course, he's the, the maker and creator of uh, the visible universe. And then, uh, this of course connects to the logos or the sun, who is called the creator of all things in Ephesians and uh, Colossians. And of course, of course, obviously, this connects to uh, the Gospel of John and in his prologue there. So would you okay. say that Ra? That would, huh? you, would you say that you could make a direct connection between Ra and Melchizedek? Like that they'd be similar, or kind of in a way, I guess. I mean, uh, I mean, there's a a demiurge figure by the name of Ptah or Ta in Egyptian mythology, and he's like sort of like a priest king of uh, Ra, I guess. Mm -hmm. So you're sort of like a demiurge, yeah. Okay. Demiurge yeah. figure. <clears throat> and I think there's like a bull figure in uh, an exodus that connects to, the, oh gosh, I forget the name of the of this bull figure. Just, the name escapes me, but I, did, I do talk about it in the book. But the golden calf that, you know, the Israelites, you know, Worship, <laughs> mm -hmm. they, uh, they they commit idolatry in front of the eyes of Moses. Uh, it does connect to uh, to some. There's a golden calf in Egypt as well. I just forgot the name, but oh well. Hathor? Uh, uh, maybe. Uh, I just I, I forget the names. I mean, I, but I do talk about it in the book. Okay, so I do talk about God's wife in the book too, or Yahweh's wife. Now I do talk how. Oops, why is it going back? Let me go back here. <laughs> okay. So I did talk about how uh, in Judaism at one point that it was actually polytheistic. And how uh, Yahweh was seen as a warrior god in uh, first temple of Judaism. And he can be compared to other figures in other religions like uh, Baal Hadad and Canaanite mythology and in uh sumerian myths of uh, enki and ia and anu i mean really i mean enki is just for like split up into uh two different figures in genesis and one of yahweh and one of the serpent so 
the serpent and Yahweh are actually one and the same, really. I mean, if you oh, I mean, if you connect to Sumerian myths, really, but that's if you take that uh, seriously. But I mean, it's up to people to take that, you know, make that what they make that what they will. But um, the comparative mythology side of it right. adds clarity. I mean, if, right, if you but accept Yahweh, it. Go ahead. What were you saying? I said, if you accept it, like you said, you know, some people are going to be uh, more dogmatic and be super conservative and reject it altogether. But if you have a little bit of a more liberal view, and I mean the the literal word, you know, the real word, you know, more of an open mind, then um, then connections <clears throat> seem more feasible that way. Sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, like even like the Sumerian myths were uh, when they were initially published out there i think a lot of the uh, uh the you know the biblical scholars were very much you know excited by the, all the connections like you know this actually supported you know the genesis story but of course you know the more people got in you know researching this idea it does connect to you know the, the sumerian story of uh, the elishud i think because uh, i mean <sighs> If you read that creation story, it, it does seem very similar to Genesis, for sure. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and, and really, at one point, I think I, I think it's a, a figure by the name of uh, oh boy, there's a warrior god. Uh, I, th I think I know what you're talking about. Do, do you know what I'm talking about, Tracy? He's like a warrior god in Babylonian myth. He's a uh, oh. Marduk. Marduk. Yeah. Marduk. And he kills, he actually kills the uh, goddess Tiamat, I think. Yep. Yeah. So he's just he, like Michael. Uh, yeah. But just like Michael and, and uh, the devil. And, uh, yeah. Uh, and he actually creates heaven and earth by her corpse. <laughs> right. Yeah. And maybe yeah, think of Oranos, too. It makes me think of that myth, too. Yeah. Oranos, so. yeah. Oranos and you have, yeah, Oranos and then Gaia. Yeah, it all, it's all very much interconnected, yes. Um, so I, I'm, I'm sure there's a slide coming up about uh, about Michael, right? I don't want to jump ahead. Yeah, I mean, uh, kind of. I mean, I don't really get into Michael, but I mean, yeah, I do mention okay. it. Yeah. Oh, I just, um, I was thinking like uh, Michael and Milky were maybe connected, but I, I was just going, going back to some conversations you and I had like a year ago, and I thought I remembered you saying that, but go ahead. Yeah. So you have uh, in Judaism, I mean, you have you know Yahweh is depicted, depicted as warrior god, kind of like uh, Marduk, and then uh, and then the, the, you know archaeology has found that and confirmed that there were two pedestals dedicated to Yahweh and his uh, wife Ashura. But uh, the question is, who was she? So, but then I figured out how you know archaeology of early temples of in uh, Judaism to show that there's a second pillar of uh, Ashura. Now, uh, now I also point out in the book that uh, there there are Gnostics who believe that uh, the, who did see this as truth, such as you know the Barbalites, and uh, the Barbalites were uh, named after the goddess Barbolo, and Barbolo was a sort of like a mother figure in Gnostic analogy. And she was connected to actually the Holy Spirit, believe it or not. Right. That's from the uh, Apocryphon of John. Is that is that right? Alex? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Barbello always yeah. stuck out to that. Yeah. So in, in that in that text, uh, the Apocryphon of John talks about how like there's just this monad, right? And then he emanates forth Barbello, who's like the mother of the living. And she's like the mother of all the aeons, including Christ, which is where we get the whole idea of the virgin story, by the way. So the whole, so the, you know, Mary being a virgin, her giving birth to Christ. Well, that comes from the Gnostic Aeonology. So, Bar, so Barbello gives birth to Christ as one of these different aeons in the Pleroma. Uh, now the Barbellites, I mean, there were... <laughs> <laughs> they were involved in sacred sex, yes. <laughs> and uh, sacred sex was a very much a popular concept in antiquity. But you know, I mean, but you know, 
and you know back then you know their morality was very much different from christian morality from today for sure i mean you know they were sacrificing uh their firstborn children left and right so yeah <laughs> yeah so a little, a little bit of sex magic was no big deal for sure right yeah so like you know it's like you know fucking in a, in a sacred temple was like you know no big deal to them back then. so i mean the whole idea of like you know like eating the sperm and the mentees or whatever. I mean, I, I think actually, you know, that actually does really go back to antiquity, really, mm -hmm. in my opinion, because they were involved in the same thing, I think. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, of course, you know, sacred sex was uh, forbidden in uh, Judaism. But uh, but yeah, in Ugaritic texts, uh, it does say talk about uh, Ashura as a goddess of wisdom and uh, and then it actually you know it, it was just really crazy when i found this out that she uh ashera actually gives birth to a son named baal hadad and baal hadad can be compared to not only yahweh but uh yaldabaoth and uh yabak <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah that movie makes a lot of sense all those connections there so i'm like what so that was nuts <laughs> Well, I mean, if you uh, go on this uh, link here, it'll, uh, it talks about like a uh, Canaanite version of the of the Genesis myth. But I mean, I'll give it to you guys. So maybe you can post it. I mean, I don't yeah, care. yeah, I'll definitely oh, post yeah. it up. I'll have to uh, do a little adjustments here. I mean, <laughs> these are like last minute changes that I did. And then, uh, and then, uh, who is uh, God's wife? Of course, I mean, I already mentioned earlier, but she's Ashura. Now, Ashura, she as uh, mentioned, well, Ashura does connect to Ishtar and uh, Inanna, yes. I did, there's a connection there for sure. Uh, she's mentioned in uh, Wisdom 9, uh, and you know, the Book of Wisdom was, uh, well, supposedly authored by Solomon, but who knows. Mm -hmm. But basically, in that text, uh, Sophia instructed Solomon to build the first temple, and uh, and tells us that you know Solomon was considered like you know the the priest king, and she was also he was also married to Sophia, in that text or Shara, and of course is mirrored as uh, the you know Yahweh's relationship to uh, Shara as a royal couple, and then Solomon was sort of like a, also a Melchizedek, a priest king. And he consecrates the high, you know, as a high priest, and he blesses the congregation. However, uh, uh, Solomon can't really escape his fate, you know, as a fallen king, because you know God doesn't really like kings <laughs> by default. Uh, so he does punish him eventually, because you know he uh, does uh, succumb to uh, worshiping foreign gods and apostasy and fornicating and having, you know, multiple side hoes and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's so true. I remember, like, I, the, everything you're saying is totally taking me back to Sunday school for some reason. But I remember, yeah. like, getting the details on David and Solomon, and I'm like, hold on, I thought these guys were, like, the guys were supposed to, like, these are our heroes. And they're totally yeah. slipping, like <laughs> peeking in the middle of the night off of your roof, watching one of your soldier's wife take a bath and go send him off to battle to get killed, and then take her as your wife, like tripping. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you think that uh, this idea of Solomon being married to Sophia could be connected to the idea that uh, he had a relationship with the Queen of Sheba because she was a wisdom-associated person also? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think I, uh, I, I really hope I, 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 I hope I remember she's in here, but I think she is. But I mean, I, d I definitely do think she's in the book. I do remember she, I did write about the Queen Sheba in the book, yes. Cool. But, uh, well, I guess we'll figure it out. <laughs> she's, 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 I forgot what, what I wrote. So it's just so long since I wrote this thing, but it's in here somewhere, maybe. Uh, now, Ashera was uh, the god's consort who, uh, yeah, I mean, you see this from, uh, there's an image here. I mean, there's uh, some dude with a 
long schlong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I mean, these uh, were comes from, uh, were found at uh, uh, Cunt Indelegent or something. I can't even pronounce that word. <laughs> I know. What? Like... <laughs> okay, so that, that horned thing is a bull. So yeah. it's there's not a baby drinking milk down there. There's yeah. something else going on. <laughs> Hold on just a second. I'm going to try and make it Cut bigger on the screen uh, here for everybody. Uh, Ardrud. <laughs> what, what did you just say? Cuntalit. Oh, I'm just reading what I, what I wrote there. Cuntalit. Oh. Ard Ardrud. Right, I can't right, pronounce right. it. <laughs> Is that better? <laughs> yeah, no, it sounds like, you know, another word. But, I mean, it really just, say, it just says that. <laughs> Why would they depict that? What are What's going on that? there with the animals? Yeah. Pointing to it. Well, oh, that see. comes from, uh, let's see here. I forgot. Yeah, I it comes from, exactly. Let me put this up here. Comes from the Sinai Peninsula, the northern part from the 9th, 8th century BCE. Although we, we don't really know the date exactly. <laughs> but uh, it does say that, uh, the inscription on below, uh, it does say, no, or sorry, above, it just say Ashara and his Ashura. No, Yahweh and his Ashura. This comes from uh, Sinai, actually, yeah. This this needs a caption, guys. Anyone in the audience who wants to take a little snip of you guys, this get to work and making add this a into a meme. Let's go. <laughs> I'm surprised there's nothing posted in the Discord already. What are we waiting for? I guess, Tracy, you've been finding some great stuff to caption lately. And the one that the weird, like, almost poorly drawn creatures with the thing writing on its back or whatever, like, we'll send them to yeah. you. On, we'll tag them up on, on Twitter, Alex, so you can uh, not miss yeah. out just to get I don't. I haven't been seeing you in the Discord. I assume you're busy all the time. So uh, if, yeah. don't come to the Discord if you have things to do. I can tell you that is true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I have a nine to five job, so just well, well, really nine to seven job, really, but it just takes too much of my time. But on the weekends, I do have free time left. But you know, yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting that Yahweh has a has a dick there. <laughs> well, what else would you expect, I guess, if you think about well, it? Well, I mean, you know, he was a male god. But, I mean, but, you know, eventually, you know, in Judaism, Ashura, you know, she's no longer uh, a figure of worship. She's, you know, tossed aside eventually. And then uh, Yahweh's bride becomes Israel instead. And, of course, that connects to uh, the book of Revelation, too. The Lamb and the bride and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to read all this stuff. I mean, you guys can obviously, you know, can read it. So I'll just kind of move on here. But yeah, it does connect to uh, uh, Zeus and Hera and Juno and all that kind of good stuff. But I do say that, uh, uh, you know, Asherah is eventually downgraded, becomes, you know, reinforced as second-class citizen in uh, Judaism. And also in the book, I do uh, connect a share to Lucifer and Venus in the fall of Lucifer as well, because they're both pretty much kicked out as a, a, one of the heavenly pantheon of worship. Now, that's interesting uh, if it was really God's, yeah. God God got divorced sure. and blamed his his ex-wife. that You think that's what yeah. you're looking at, Alex? God got a divorce and blamed his ex-wife, literally made her into Satan himself? <laughs> it's very possible. Yeah, it's very possible. <laughs> Uh, I mean, even Marker Barker makes this connection that Lucifer uh, was actually a female entity, and that and that and Lucifer was actually also a high priest or high priestess in heaven. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that would go along with the idea that uh, you know Zeus had this first wife meet, which you know Hammer Purcell is saying is Baphomet. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it also seems to connect, it, it will meet as the Metis, you know, the, the Gnostic wisdom deity. And then, you, you know, he they, they uh, had a parting of the ways, and so he swallowed her and, uh, or in some versions, turned her into a slave or something. But uh, mm -hmm. anyway, yeah, she definitely got uh, demoted 
But yeah. so yeah, if she's Baph if she's Baphomet, Baphomet's the devil. Yeah. Who's this, you know, Luc Lucifer's uh, probably the same sort of character here, or at least in that context. M makes me think of the well, Mel Gibson thing too, where uh, Mel Gibson's devil in his little movie um, was very androgynous, if not almost female. In the uh, Passion of the Christ, that's the that's the title, right? Yes. Sorry, go ahead, Alex. Sure, it does. Okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, going back to what Tracy said, uh, Lucifer. Well, I mean, well, I pretty much that you know, I figure out that you know, there's basically three falls in the Bible of Lucifer. I mean, there's the first fall, in Ezekiel, and uh, Isaiah. You know where she's, you know, or he or she. I mean, she really is just a, kind of like a hermaphrodite, hermaphroditic, really entity. Really, he's, she, mm -hmm. you know, he has both male and female characteristics, uh, yes. or intersex, if you want to go of the social justice warrior terminology there. <laughs> but uh, uh, so she has, you know, both male and female characteristics. But he is a, uh, so he. Uh, he is actually considered the, to be the high priest of the universe because he also is, is depicted as having a chest plate or, uh, you know, the uman and thumum, mm -hmm. uh, different, different uh, jewels. And, uh, of course, you know, the, <laughs> this idea is actually popularized in, the, in the Avengers, by the way. And, of course, Avengers is coming out tomorrow, the new movie. So I'll watch that one for sure. <laughs> But, uh, I'm talking about the chess play. Uh, yeah, the chess play with the jewels and everything. Yeah, yeah. The, the ephod, the woman, the thumun. But yeah. So, but he, but in Ezekiel, just Lucifer is depicted as having these this chess play too, in the Garden of God, of Eden, and he's actually cast out as well. You know, for having you know, a nekiti was found within him or her, and then. Uh, and then, and then later on, he becomes like demoted as sort of like just an accuser angel in Job. Right, the mm -hmm. adversary. Right. And then eventually, then he loses even that status of having the access to the throne of the God. And then he's just thrown to the to the earth in uh, Revelation, later in Revelation 12. So, so he's just like, you know, he's cast down to the earth. And it's kind of weird, too, because even in uh, Isaiah, it says that the earth... No, I'm sorry, that the, he was cast out of the pit, and then in Revelation, it says he was cast out of the earth. I'm like, hmm. So what? So earth is the pit? You know? That's the way <laughs> I always read that. Yeah. Yeah. Is earth hell? I don't know. It kind of sounds well, like it. Yeah, Tart Tartarus is said to be Gaia's womb, so that would totally make sense. Yeah. So, I mean, this is... I mean, it's not really stated explicitly but is it implied in the bible for sure uh i mean i won't read all this but i mean you guys can obviously can read it but i mean it does connect i mean you know israel and yahweh were once again yeah they were considered you know the bride and the bridegroom and that sort of thing and holy spirit was considered synonymous with the mother and uh barbello and not necessarily with sophia you know so they weren't actually Sophia and, and and the Holy Spirit weren't weren't actually the same entity. I kind of find out. Wow. Uh, Sophia is actually the daughter of the Holy Spirit. Actually, she's an emanation of the Holy Spirit. Actually, hmm. so Sophia is a different entity entirely, even though she does descend from the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is considered one and the same as the mother, in the, the Gospel of the Hebrews that the Church Fathers uh, quote. Mm -hmm. And Christ is considered the son of the mother in that text. Well, I mean, should, I mean, you don't really, you can't really find it anywhere, but because it was burnt by, uh, I don't know, other church fathers, because <laughs> I want to stand by heresy. But so you just see it quoted in other texts. You see it quoted yeah. by church fathers, right? Yeah, they, they're they're the, they're the only ones that actually you could. That's the, they're the only ones that can actually find that reference of the the Holy Spirit and the mother. Don't you think that's kind of a, an amazing irony is that these people were trying to destroy these cults that they thought were heretical, and yet, as it turns out, they're the ones that ended up preserving the only thing that we have left of them. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. 
That, that was the. That's often the case. That's, so, that's the best proof I mean, for any press is good press, right? That's the proof in the pudding. Yeah. Like that might be the only thing left written about you is that they said they didn't like you, but at least the evidence <laughs> that you exists is there, right? Oh yeah, I mean, like all the, a lot of these Gnostic sects were uh, uh, burnt uh, by the church fathers because they thought they were they had demons in, inside these texts. Because they're considered like magical texts, I guess. But I mean, that's really up to uh, your opinion, I guess. Yeah, that's the argument that doesn't end, right? That's the same accusation they were putting on Jesus, right? Don't we speak correctly when we say that you are a Samaritan with a demon? That's you know, that... yeah. That's in John, yeah. And it's funny though. I mean, even though Jesus does deny he had a demon, but he doesn't deny he was a Samaritan. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, uh, I never thought of that. That's far out. Yeah, I mean, there's a figure here of Baal Hadad. Yeah, he has a, a hat that looks like the a pope, looks like the pope's hat, right? That's where it comes from. Might have yeah. tradition of a Canaanite religion, really. Mm -hmm. And then, and then at the bottom there, you have a. a, a a coin of Yahweh actually holding a bird. So that's actually, well, it could refer to Yahweh, but I mean, we're not really, we don't really know for sure. But yeah, it's all, it all connects to that. I mean, I'm not going to read all this stuff. I mean, it's just because I'm kind oh, of no. out of time here. But, uh, yeah, this is great. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, you have uh, Melchizedek. deck, going back to Melchizedek, deck, he does appear in other texts like, uh, Let's see, obviously Genesis, but he does appear in other texts like, you know, Hebrew, obviously, because he's considered uh, without having a father and without a mother. And, uh, you know, he was, uh, he was like, it's seen as, yeah, he wasn't, he was seen kind of like Jesus. He was like the one without being born of male seed, but just simply just born of a virgin, right? Right. And let's see here. Okay, and then uh, and then I was talking about how uh, the crucifixion allowed Jesus to trick the, the archons by causing to kill him, a spiritually pure man, but this error caused the temple veil to tear, which provided a pathway to heaven, or the second temple, really. Well, I mean, I want to make uh, something clear here. So, you know, in First Temple Judaism, you know, Asherah and Yahweh were worshipped in that context, right? And there was also a pole of the serpent. A pole, in, yeah, and a bronze serpent in the First Temple, but that was uh, tossed aside by the uh, Deuteronomical re reforms that you see in Deuteronomy and First and Second Kings and Chronicles. So, so there, there, sorry, there was a temple. There was a serpent on a pole in the in the temple. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what was, uh, uh, Margaret Barker. She, okay, she's well. I keep mentioning her. So she's a, a scholar, and she's a, she's also a Methodist. But she's her work is very popular in, uh, in Mormon Mormon uh, circles. But I mean, but I do think she's definitely right in a lot of ways. Uh, so so the so the um bron the bronze serpent that that Moses raised up the Nehushtan to heal everybody yeah this, isn't it sounds like it's the same thing or yeah I mean, because you know, yeah I mean uh, because you know in Canaanite mythology uh, the mother was considered you know the, the serpent and the tree was considered uh, uh, symbols of the mother you know for sure right. So, and even in Proverbs, I mean, it preserves this idea. I mean, it has, you know, the tree of wisdom. Absolutely. Being full of wisdom, you know. Proverbs and Ecclesiastes both are always referencing wisdom as a, as a woman, as the woman that you want to take her, take her advice and what she has to offer more than anything else. Yeah. And then, you know, she's often, you know, rejected by everyone. And then, uh, but, you know, what's funny is that all these texts like, you know, Enoch and uh, Jeremiah record 
this idea of these temple priests, you know, rejecting wisdom and reject, and then sure enough, they experience calamity and destruction. And their their temple, the first temple, is destroyed because they rejected wisdom. Hmm. And it even says this in Proverbs, you know, if you reject my advice, my counsel, then you'll experience destruction. So, right there, you go. Right. Yeah, it's pretty. You listen to the woman. That's right. Yeah, right. Very start, all, all uh, kidding very start, aside, uh, we could we advice. could definitely stand to get our heads all screwed on the straight um, for for where uh, where where everything fits together and not just assume that a it was always right or you know or b that dissembling it all is the way to solve it either. You know, I think I think we all can agree that there's there's a there's a secret middle path here. Oh yeah, for sure. Like in the, in the second temple, though, I mean. I mean, they, they kind of like uh, said that, you know, they, they found like a second book of the law, the law of the Moses, like it was like hidden somewhere. <laughs> and uh, I think King, uh, I think it was, oh boy, I forgot his name, not Hosea, but it was some other king, but the name is escaping me at the moment, but I'm sure when people read the book, they'll figure out who it is because I do tell, talk about him. <laughs> but uh but when he came into power, uh, even the second temple was destroyed too. So not only was the first temple destroyed, but the second temple was destroyed too by the Babylonians. So, well, I mean, well, not, well, so I'm sorry. I'll take that back. The first temple was destroyed by the Babylonians. The second temple was destroyed by the Romans in the, you know, after Christ, you know? Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, so anyway, so Malchizedek, he's work, he's uh, he's considered sort of like uh, an exalted patriarch and angel in other texts like the Pist of Sophia and the Book of Jew <laughs> or Eau or whatever you want to call it. I don't know, but he is he is called like a paralemtor. And uh, we'll see what that means here. And well, actually, let me go back here. Well, that link you'll see this is from uh, divinity who's st andrews uk that's from a scholar and he talks about he makes all these connections i do uh quote him for sure in my book but uh you can take a look at that for yourself if you want to check that out i mean I, it's just too much to me for it to get into right now but it does connect to the michael and the devil and revelation for 12 for sure it's all connected yes <clears throat> Uh, so the parent paralympics are light. Uh, so, you know, paralympics just means he's a light being or a psychopomp. He receives the uh, deceased person into the light of the pleroma. He, uh, well, he's, like, he's like the high priest. He's the head of the paralympics. And of course, Piss of Sophia, he, he's basically seen as a, a psychopomp. And of course, psychopomp means, you know, someone, you know, an entity that guides the dead to the afterlife or whatever afterlife they wind up going into, I guess, uh, heaven or hell. Uh, the but, but for Melchizedek, he uh, carries the, he's considered the parallel of life by Christ, actually, directly. Christ actually talks about uh, the parallel of Melchizedek in the, the Piss of Sophia, and he purifies the souls and he carries them to the treasury of life. And, uh, and of course, Jesus is the Savior God, the child. He's also considered sort of like a paralemptor. And if you read the Epistle of Sophia, that's basically like uh, an account that Jesus gives to his disciples, you know, right after his death and resurrection, actually. And he, he gives him like, uh, you know, his uh, revelation of what the afterlife entails. Mm -hmm. so there's multiple heavens and multiple hells, according to the, the Pista Sophia. And uh, in the Pista Sophia, it does, uh, yeah, it does talk about how, you know, even, and it's kind of crazy too, the Pista Sophia uh, can be seen as a grimoire, by the way, especially in the, in the third books, second, third books, especially the third book has a very magical quality to it. I came to find, and I found that very interesting because it does mention all these different gods and goddesses, like Greek gods, by the way, in that text. Like, 
even compares like Zeus to Christ. So I'm like, hmm, that might be must be from a different person who wrote this, but I don't know. Uh, so let's see. Let's yeah, the guy, the here. guy from the new chronology stuff from last week has an article online about um, how Flamenco's work ties into the same thing. Odin and oh no, that's right, it was Odin and Christ. You said someone else. I'm sorry, I made a mistake there. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean Odin, he's a uh, he's called you know the All Father or uh, oh, what's his what's his I think he has another title. I just forget his name. The, the, the actual title. I mean, it's just I mean I, I do talk about all this. Stuff. I do talk about Odin too in the book, by the way. But uh, but yeah, I mean I, Barker. Yeah, he he wrote she wrote a book or sorry a paper called The High Priest and the Worship of Jesus, and of course. She says that the Book of Revelation, the whole story of the Book of Revelation is the return of Asherah and wisdom that co that comes back with Christ and as, as sort of like the return of the high priest of Melchizedek. So Melchizedek returns in Revelation in the form of the Lamb and the Bride. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty nuts. Yeah, that is <laughs> And I think I'm kind of spoiling the book, but I mean, whatever. <laughs> uh, so the book of Revelation, yeah, so it does connect to the club moon close the sun. And of course, talks about, you know, the Michael, the archangel. Yeah, okay, so I did talk about that. <laughs> it's just still long as I did this. And of course, the story of the woman leaves us perplexed, so whether she represents either the church of Mary or the mother of Jesus. She could be uh, seen as Israel or the mother or the figure, the figure mother of the Jewish Messiah. Uh, she does also connect to Michael, or sorry, likewise in the war in heaven, which features Michael as the divine hero. It could compare to other heroes like Mithras, battling the poor, the pole lords in the Mithras liturgy, and Yahweh battling the Leviathan in Job. So this connects to Baal battling Yom, the great celestial serpent in canine myth. And then now the the Nag Hammadi chest in uh, it, it tells us that he carried out a number of rituals and invocations to Gnostic uh, divinities. Then more heavenly messengers granted him another, uh, let's see, oh boy, this thing is not, okay, revelation that appears to indicate that Melchizedek himself will be uh, incarnated as Jesus Christ. So uh, I guess you could say that you know, Jesus Christ is just another incarnation of Melchizedek or vice versa. I mean, right. So. And of course, this is also connected to Seth, by the way. It's all kind of interconnected. Yeah, I've, I've heard of Seth and Melchizedek being the same before. It's, that totally makes sense. Yeah, and also Seth is, of course, considered like, you know, the, the, the third son of Adam and Eve. Yeah. And uh, he's the one who actually, let's see, because, you know, Cain and Abel, you know, so Abel died, obviously, by Cain tins, and Cain was uh, cast out, and he became, like, kind of like a lone wanderer, and then became, I don't even know, like uh, the consort of Lilith, I guess, right? I don't, I don't know, I think it's in the Kabbalah. And then I they think they sort house. of act like he's the son of Lilith, but yeah. Or, oh, or okay. Or, or, or maybe, yeah, or like, it's kind of weird. it's kind of very weird too. Like he's like a like incestuous relationship. Like he's a son of the devil, but at the same time he's also the concert of Lilith. Like that's kind of weird, but whatever. <laughs> it's the Bible, I guess. It's the Old Testament stuff. Uh, well, the demons the get into kinky stuff, but yeah, but... yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> In the Book of Revelation, I mean, uh, it says it talks about how the, the ark is restored to the Holy of Holies. And the four horses right outside the temple, and then uh, there's like there's the mist of seven lamps, and the menorah. Here, the spirit promising faithful that they will receive the hidden manna. And then John uh, describes the restoration of the first temple. He saw the queen of heaven. Well, uh, you know the sun lady is really the queen of heaven, by the way. Uh, she's you know the church also. You know, she's a consort of Christ or Melchizedek or Yahweh, whatever. So she's the Virgin Mary. Um, yeah, yeah, and I, and I connect to the Virgin Mary for sure in the book too. It's all connected, yes. And even you know, it's funny. Even in the what is it in the Celsus, He's a pagan writer. He was trying to debunk Christianity, but he uh, he said that 
uh, Mary was like a whore, or well, not really a whore, but he was like a hairdresser for boars. And she gave birth to a Jesus out of wedlock from a Roman soldier. And <laughs> It's pretty nuts, yeah. yeah. And the Jesus like a like like a like a, uh, a magician or a sorcerer. Uh, but then, you know, let's go on here. All the stories discrediting <laughs> Jesus always make me believe uh, even more that it must have been something very real that happened because, like, no, he's in hell boiling in poop, and oh no, his mother yeah. was a whore who gave birth to a magic demon, or you know, like it seems like it, they protest too much, like. Something happened that they couldn't explain away. Yeah, the Talmud uh, does say that, you know, Jesus was a heretic or whatever, and then he was, he's, like, boiling in hell and, and crap. But, you know, I mean, <laughs> but it's kind of funny because, you know, the the accusation of Celsus and the Pharisees are very similar to each other, so that, I don't think that's a coincidence. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, uh, anyway, so it says the woman who is called in the sun is the queen of heaven. She was pregnant and already birthed the Messiah. Interestingly, Messiah means the anointed. What was the, was the Messiah anointed with? Well, the answer is actually, oops, <laughs> the, uh, the oil that comes from the tree of wisdom. <laughs> and, uh, but I quote this from another guy, uh, Tim Class, and he does his own kind of stuff. I think he's an atheist and mythicist. I mean, I mean, it's whatever, but. But he has a lot of really uh, useful information on his site too, which I think I think everybody should check it out. <laughs> but uh, for the the pre-Christians, they thought that the lady represented the tree of life and the tree of wisdom. Or I mean, they were I guess they were one and the same, really. Yes. Um, yes. Or, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I think I, I mean I think kind of got already gone over this. I mean, the Eucharist does connect to you know, Jesus Duck. This and Mark. Uh, the whole yeah, when Jesus talks about eating his flesh and blood, that comes from Mel Jesus Duck. I mean, I know this sounds very cannibalistic, but there you go. But <laughs> <laughs> well, then of course, where shall wisdom be found? Uh well, I mean, also even Proverbs talks about how, uh, you know, come eat of my bread and drink, and then, you know, leave your simplicity and live and walk in the way of uh, discernment and wisdom. And uh, I think the Genesis Rabbah talks about the same subject. But, I mean, I quote this from Margaret Barker. Uh, you could read that book or that uh paper on your own time because I don't definitely don't have time to read that whole thing because it's really long. Uh, but yeah, it's really interesting. So that's the but name of the paper, uh, where, where shall wisdom be found? Yeah, where shall, well, I mean, that comes from uh, Job because Job rhetorically asked, you know, where, right. where is wisdom found? Because you can't really find it in the realm of living. It's what, or the world is found somewhere else. And then, uh, and then there's a there's a Melchizedekian, Melchizedekian heresy. Actually, I found this is interesting. Is that uh, you know Epiphanius and Tertullian, the church fathers, they talk about there's these Jews that call themselves the uh, Melchizedekians because they thought he was considered the great power and he was actually higher than the Messiah. Because it huh. says, "Thou art a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek." Yeah. So because you know Jesus follows after Melchizedek, so they thought, right. well, maybe right. it's just you know he's just like you know a wannabe <laughs> Melchizedek. <laughs> same, same reason why why people think like John the Baptist is bigger because he came first. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of like that idea. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, I quote that. I mean, I, there's a big quote here, you know, uh, for Tertullian, he says, against all heresies, that uh, for the Melchizedek, he says, was a he heavenly virtue, preeminent grace, and that Christ acts for human beings, made their, uh, the precator the pre the, the pre and advocate, Melchizedek does also for heavenly angels and virtues. So, so basically, Melchizedek is a is a priest for angels. 
Okay. But, oh. but, but Christ is actually a knowledge Jesus deck for human beings. Oh, well, according to uh, the the heresy uh, introduced by uh, Victorinus and Praxeus, which I think were Valentinians, I think, and they and they were trying. And they also said that uh, that that Jesus is God the Father Almighty, and then he contends that. Or they contend that he was that God, a mod, a God Almighty Himself, the Father, was actually crucified, suffered, and died and resurrected. Wow! Which is nuts. Which is interesting because it does connect to all these different people out there on YouTube when, like, these Christians were saying that uh, Christ is the Father, that there is no Son. I mean, it's just really constant back and forth. The saying that they didn't even deny the Trinity. It's really nuts. Yeah, like, yeah, I mean, I've seen about, about I've this seen. idea the Trinity was already settled in the councils <laughs> back then, in the you know around the I don't know the fourth, fifth, sixth centuries. Now all of a sudden, uh, people are saying, "Okay, there is no Trinity." Like it's like, okay, come on, people, make up your minds here. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like going back and forth here so i mean i mean i don't really dispute the trinity but other people will do that though uh, so that's so almost a, as above so yeah. below with that too the Mel melchizedek is uh, ministering to the angels above and christ is ministering to the people on the earth below like that's another yeah the, well according to some the the heretics that right, uh, right. tertullian talks about but I mean that's that's something that I don't think anybody has really mentioned in my research really. Uh, and then uh, and then there is the Holy Grail that's connect to uh, Melchizedek too. And I quote this from a from a website called The Overlords of Chaos. <laughs> uh, he talks about you know, the New World Order and uh, the Holy Grail and all that stuff. You know all the stuff that you see from Alex Jones, but he does he does talk about all that stuff too. And of course, you know the Holy Grail does uh, connect to a Melchizedek's cup, and uh, and Melchizedek, uh, well, according to him, was the high priest of the Sun Oracle on Mount Zion, who gives Abraham the cup during the blessing. Uh, and then this is also connects to the cup of destiny associated from the very beginning with the star of wisdom that is that also connects to the uh, the stone that that falls from Lucifer's uh, crown. In uh, there's a from a uh, Percival, I think from a uh, yeah uh, yeah. And yeah, Tracy talks about this too. Sure. Okay, so that's in Percival. Percival, yeah. Yeah, because uh, that made me think. Um of uh the smurf show with the gentleman Ilian maybe he goes pretty extensively into the grail stone so that's an interesting reference folks if you go back to the smurfy code uh picture show or just go look at Ilian maybe's presentation I, i'm sure this all ties together there's probably some digging we could do right there yeah yeah well you know i did a it's kind of a side note here uh, so i did a interview with uh another interesting person but somehow our interview got uh, mangled in because of skype so i mean i'm really i'm just like i kick myself even to this day that i didn't get to publish the interview but uh she's her name is amanda uh radcliffe i think but she's a she's a cathar priestess in france yeah. And, uh, and she told me uh, all kinds of interesting things that, that kind of blew my mind. I mean, it really blew my mind, really. But she told me that the, she actually is a, a guardian, a guardian priestess for uh, these stones, these grail stones. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, and it connects to all this stuff. So... These are black stones. Do you think she'd come See, she's actually seen them? Yeah, she has them. She owns them. She, I don't know how she got them, but she is, she is a guardian of these Holy Grail stones. Yeah. Hmm. 
No, no. Yeah, if I mean, you think she'd come on the show, Alex, we'd uh, we'd love. To, I'd love to uh, to sit back and listen to you and her and Tracy digress. I mean, absolutely. I, could... <laughs> I, I think it'll take like five hours to really just to, like peel back the onions here. But man, like, we could start early. I think she told me it's kind of just oh my god. And I, I guess I really do kick myself to this day that I didn't uh properly uh recorded conversation because when i listen to it it's all garbled because of skype so i don't know if that's like on purpose well is it, if it's legible if it's legible enough we should, uh, we should <laughs> we should pay somebody to transcribe it and then we could reread it oh man i don't know if that's even possible it, it's the sound quality is is terrible yeah so. pretty bad huh yeah so but I mean, I really hope to bring her back on some at some point because the thing she told me was, I think uh, not only connects to my research, but the research that we did with Trace, what I did with Trace, really. Yeah. Uh, it does correlate and support everything that we did and, and talked about. Hey, um, on a technical note, are you? Um, is the sound coming? through speakers to you are you during this conversation now or are you wearing headphones i can't remember oh it's, it's a spike speakers yeah do you think that's that's possibly what's causing like every time someone speaks it there's a little bit of overlap we're all talking over each other and i'm wondering if you had earbuds in or something we can maybe there's like some feedback going on or something is basically what i'm saying so uh I, idea. Think, no, I think i don't think it's really that i think it's just the settings of skype i don't know skype hates okay. me has a deep hatred of me <laughs> i don't know what it is uh zoom zoom likes me but skype uh hates me deeply so i don't even bother with skype anymore to be honest i think skype is an agent of the demiurge and <laughs> like, yeah. the info you're spreading oh man the the information that i got from her I think was priceless, but it was, it was, I couldn't even listen to it. Like I didn't even bother publishing it because it was just so bad. But anyway, you can find uh, more information about of Mill Cheese Deck and Margaret Barker's research and Yahweh's wife and Shara and all that good stuff. And, and in um, your book to come. Yeah, in my book to come. And then of course, there's a whole quote here. I'm not going to read from Hebrews. You know, Christ is also considered to be, uh, you know, the Son of God. He's like he is considered the high, the high priest in Hebrews, and he's the one who, in actuality, is the one who uh, blesses and initi initiates the angels in heaven. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, well, so yeah, while yes, Mel Jesus is sort of a Melchizedek figure, but in the end, he is the one who. Uh, Sets everything straight. Right. Here. Right. Uh, the end. There we go. Awesome. Oh wow! <laughs> thank you very much, Alex. That was terrific. Yeah, that thank was you. And, amazing. Um, and uh, be patient yeah. with us, folks. We'll we'll get the proper link from Alex when he's uh, has it. He said he had to make a couple updates or something, and then we'll make it available in the Discord. It'll be available in the comments of this episode. And of course, you can always, uh, you know, if you don't think you're finding it easy enough, you can always uh, go to the A on I or go to Twitter and just at Alex or hit him up. He's very approachable, easy to talk to. So, but I'm excited to actually carefully read over this whole thing. Thank you very much for doing this, man. We can't thank you enough. That was great, dude. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, let me see if I'm going to go. Do you see you guys now? Uh, you? Uh, no, I don't. See, uh, well, I'm looking at the wrong. Oh, I'm switch it over. I don't see you though. No. There you go. There. Yeah. Now yeah. I see. You. <laughs> yeah. So. Let's see. Yeah. I mean, there it is. So. Get to... I guess I <laughs> overstated. I, I think I should be in bed by now, but it is one o'clock here. But I mean, I did. I, I didn't want to rush the whole thing, and I think uh, the subject needs to be uh, explained a little bit. You know, a little of that at least. So. You did a great job, and thanks for tolerating my interruptions and my childish jokes and everything. You know, oh, but it was, yeah. okay, no, no. I mean, I mean, the, the figure of it sure does connect to Ishtar and Inanna and Lucifer, and, and it's kind of weird because you know, throughout maybe like the first few months of this year, it was really quiet. Then, boom! All of a sudden, there was like the whole thing with uh, with Ishtar, the whole thing with you know, in Sri Lanka, and the whole thing. With, <laughs> Her name, and then it's just like 
uh, sort of like a, a warning of things to come. Like that's how I see it, too. <coughs> Unfortunately, that's how I see it, too. Like, they fired the flare across the bow. Like, it's the shot heard around the world, only it's an occult shot. Yeah. And plus, it so ties into everything you're talking about. I mean, it's Our Lady. That's it, it's, it's all Our Lady. They're... Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, you know, the, the Theotokos, you know, she's like the title uh, that means God Bearer. And, of course, she's, uh, she's also venerated and prayed to in Catholicism and uh, Eastern Orthodoxy, not so much in uh, Protestantism, Protestantism, of course, but... Uh, she is a she is a figure of importance at the, the very least in uh, in orthodoxy and Catholicism. So I, mean, I think there's definitely a reason for that. Yeah. <laughs> well, that you, you you said recently, or either, or I just heard it for the first time recently that um I didn't I didn't realize until I heard you say it that uh, the Orthodox actually um, follow the uh, immaculate conception of Mary. Yeah, you know, so I was kind of yeah, surprised. That, that... Yeah, they uh, they follow a text called uh, the Infancy Gospels, the Gospel of James. Okay. And uh, I mean, any Orthodox priest you talk to will mention that text. Oh, that's a, that reminds me of something you should know about if you've never seen it. Uh, the Have you seen the um, the Super Gospel? There's a man that spent like seven or eight years. No. His name's Robert Farrell. I'll make sure to drop you the link, man. There's, so it's a it's a book where he took all of the places in every extra canonical text that mentions Jesus, and he put them all together in order as if it was one completely super gospel. And uh, you can download it free on the internet, but I bought a hard copy because it's such a rare and unique text, and it was just a labor of love. He's just obsessed with uh, studying scripture. And um, but I'll I'll drop you a link, dude, on Twitter or something. I'll I'll make sure you see it. So. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't I actually never heard of that. This is the first time I'm actually hearing that. But uh, the but if you read the the, the infancy gospel of James, it says that the Holy Spirit had uh, possessed uh, the Virgin Mary, and the Virgin Mary is like considered like a temple virgin, I guess, or priestess. And, uh, you know, because she was brought up in the temple, one of the temples, I forget which one, but, uh, and that's why, you know, God chose her to uh, give birth to the son. Right, okay. okay. So, yeah, she was very much a very important figure that, you know, that uh, Protestantism, uh, well, at least in later Protestantism, really tends to ignore, you know, it leaves out. I mean, you only really hear her until Christmas time, that's it, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I do connect Mary in the in the book. I mean, it's all very much interconnected for sure. I mean, I know I, I do think I, I do write things that I may not uh, that some people might not like. I mean, including both Gnostics and Orthodox alike. Uh, but I mean, you know, the truth must be said. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We got we got to bring out the truth. <laughs> And uh, I don't, I don't want you to think we're trying to keep you any longer, brother. We appreciate that. Um, please, please, uh, everybody support Alex and what he's doing. Go to the aoni.com. Find him on uh, Facebook and Twitter. Um, you know, I, I don't know if you've got a pre-order page up yet, but when you get a little bit closer, I would definitely make it pre-order because some of us will just mash the button as soon as we think we can get that that book. A lot of us have our money ready, so you, as soon as you think you're ready. Tell us so we can push it out there, because I'm excited to read it after tonight, especially. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, what I, I mean, I kind of gave out a lot of the, the secrets, but I mean, but however, there's a lot more to be said, though, that I haven't even touched on in this interview. I mean, just so much information. Like, I mean, I go into all the secrets of Kabbalah, the Kabbalah. I yeah. go into Crowley. I go into John D. I go into Ooh. all sorts of things that will blow people's minds. Sweet. So, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's all interconnected. Yes, for sure. So yeah, I hope, hopefully, I don't even know when it's going to come out. Hopefully by the uh, summer or the fall. Uh, really depending on my schedule, work schedule, but 
hopefully it'll come out soon. But yeah, I do have uh, someone working on the on the cover, uh, and right, I'm also uh, working on the last portion of the book. But uh, we'll see what happens with that. Yeah, we'll be so maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll, let's just make a plan now that when you know for sure you're pretty close, we'll bring you back just to hype it up one more time. So. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be back to uh, talk more about the book. But I, mean, I just wanted to talk about much Jesus because no one really talks about him. So I'm like, well, I'll just talk about him because no one, no one ever talks about him. So there no, we go. We, we <laughs> really appreciate it, man. We 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 look forward to having you around as often as we can all make time, Alex. Sure, man. Well, it's been great uh, talking to you, uh, Sean, Jim, and uh, Tracy. You know, Jim, I don't know, is Jim there? Yeah, Jim's here. He's just, uh, we haven't figured out how to make it so it's easy for uh, you to see him yet. So I, we're, we're still working on the, the backside of the switchboard on how to get Jim's camera so that the Zoom E, that would be you, could uh, take a, you know, can see us all. So otherwise okay. he has to grab his mic and run around and stand yeah. behind me Lean over so <laughs> we're, we're getting it all hooked up we're, we're, we're working it out one step at a time so. all right man yeah i mean i'm down to uh, be another show i just uh, i don't think it can last this long because you know well it was my show to uh kind of uh show everyone of you know my research of what i've been looking at recently but yeah hopefully uh, people will get more insight into all of these different subjects for sure, man. Well, uh, yeah. well, we'll uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna go name a piggy bank so that we can fill it up with money to do more fun things. So, um, you t- don't don't sweet dreams. Do- yeah, sweet dreams. Don't right. stay up too late, man. <laughs> All right, you take care, guys. All right, bye, Alex. <laughs> Thank you, All right, Alex. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right, now let's see here. What should we? I don't know. Okay, cool. There, that looks like it worked. Yeah, I think that that, that was, was yeah. That was a great that show. Was awesome so far. That was awesome. Yeah, the more nice. the more gods we dig into, the more ex wives we find. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of how to how to work that into the all my exes live in Texas thing, but I can't. <laughs> but, all my exes live in the Pleroma. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure it's there, but I, I'm, I still, uh, I love uh, picture show. Sometimes gives me this feeling of like having hit the the peak, and then like right after that, there's that first feeling of like almost like a whoop de woo in your car or something like, whoa, like oh crap, I'm still alive. Um, <laughs> hi everybody, uh, you know my brain. I'm thinking like, whoa, you know, like all this stuff, you know, so. <laughs> Oh, um, I think somebody I, uh, in the chat said that uh, they made a different um, a different uh, a survey that, that maybe is easier to click on smartphones. Let me see if uh, I can confirm that's true. Yeah, it's it's linked on Tracy's page in the Plus Ultra. It, oh. Jacob Bacchus made a... Oh. Oh, cool. So that's it. That. Um, let's see. Can we, is there a way to get that dropped into the chat or the Discord so we can encourage everyone yeah, I dro- to... Yeah, I dropped it in the chat a while back. All right. Are we getting votes? Um, I voted. <laughs> well... Yeah, wait a minute. Okay. What? I don't know where it is, but... Uh, or maybe... Okay, maybe let me place the stuff that I had in there with a new yeah, one. Yeah, it's no, right under your list. It's like a, if you scroll down pa- past your list and past... Uh, there's a couple other articles... Uh, there's a there's a there's a comments down below. It looks like that's where he put it. Yeah, that's it. He put it in the first comment on the on the post. Okay. For those of you that don't know, um, this is the pig we are naming tonight. If you missed that somehow, um, this is uh, we're gonna we're gonna symbolically, uh, but literally, stuff this thing full of money and eventually use the money to do something cool. We don't know what yet, but it's gonna be fun. We're gonna name this guy. Okay, so I'm going to delete then the other uh, poll that I had there because it only had the one vote and uh, it was, you know, I don't want yeah. anyone to accuse us of, of uh, stacking the votes here. Yeah, they, rig- oh, they rigged so- the pig. They rigged the pig. It's also in the name the piggy. Uh- okay, so it's in the Discord? Cool. It's okay. in the Discord. Uh, yeah. We encourage you to um, look at the very bottom of the description of this episode you're watching now. If you don't have a link to our Discord, that one should last forever. Um, once you find that, there's a name in the piggy thread. You can also find it apparently by going to plus, plus ultra club.com 
And um, so we encourage you to come look at all of the wonderful names that our fans uh, came up with uh, for this little piggy bank. And they are great. Maybe we should start reading them off. I get yeah, go yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I was just now trying to get in here. So Here, do you want to? I'm, I'm almost there, too. So I know. Here's the all right. Oh, I've got it. Cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and read through these. Well, and I, as I'm reading through, I'm going to secretly vote. So <laughs> name, your ballot. That's right. Now, now is your chance to influence my vote right now. You have to send me a DM or a PM uh, with money or a promise of money. If you want me to vote for your choice instead of making my own choice, yeah, this yeah. is your opportunity to bribe me, not after I vote. It's almost impossible for me to Well, help if uh, anybody sends me money, I'll vote as many times as they send money. Yeah, yeah. A buck a vote is a totally cool $5 for a fistful. So we've got Pygmalion. Pygmalion? What does that mean? Why don't I recognize that? Pygmalion. You know, who, who is like, Pygmalion? Pygmalion. Who is it's it? It's just slipping thing. my mind. Like a vermilion? No, that's a color. A vermilion. Color? Vermilion. Joey Von Hammy Porkstall. That's a great one. That's pretty good. That, yeah, in reference to the uh, the author of uh, Mysterium Baphomenus Revelatum. Yes, and that's, uh, folks, that's coming right up. I don't know. We might have to, uh, if we don't have anything booked for next week, I love the idea of having um, the same. Uh, there's almost that Alex didn't make it, folks, is kind of what I'm getting at. Uh, Alex uh, came real short notice being able to change his answer from no to yes for this week. And we had another plan because Tracy's on the cusp of being able to push the... Uh, translation of uh, Mysterium Baphometus out into the to the public sphere right Tracy yeah it's I mean it's already what, what I've uh, done is already in my website but we want to put out a physical book it just lends itself to that really well there's so many interesting images in there and yeah. uh, it's such a rare thing anyway um, so anyway yeah there's gonna be a, a physical book <clears throat> I think that's the way you want to read this thing anyway I mean you know, it's useful to have it on the website. It's kind of, I, I kind of, um, th there was an accident or a, there was a reason why I ended up putting it on the website for free as opposed to, I was planning on just doing the book first. But I find it useful actually because this is a thing that people are still working on, uh, you know, people should still work on. Like I, there's a lot of um, mysteries still left to solve. And so if other researchers want to jump in and, uh, and, and work on the project, it's helpful to have it on a website too so that you can easily search it and right. uh, share it and things like that. Yeah, that, that's what I'm I... I'm sorry, I mean... I, Go ahead. Say what? I, do, I, uh, I feel guilty now that I'm like interrupting the, uh, the reading of the no, names. No, okay. But, yes. So we, we can continue on from here. Pygmalion, Joey Von Hammy Porchstall, Hugh de Piggins, Jacques, Jacques de Porquet, <laughs> Hamley Pig Hall, Rudolf Schweiner, Bank On, I get it, like bacon only bank on. That's, <laughs> it, it is a piggy bank. Yeah. So. Oh, we can take him out of there, Jimmy. Can we pop him out of there? Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll grab him. Don't drop him. You guys yeah, we need him. to see what he looks like so we can see what kind of name. I've got a pig on my have. shirt. Tonight. Oh yeah, does, you guys need to definitely see Jim's shirt too. Hold on, Jim. So, what did you call it again? Uh, a, like there was a little. It's a pig shirt show. A, oh, there you go. <laughs> pig shirt. This show. is this week only RX only pig shirt show. Pig shirt show. <laughs> that makes me get your themes. Jim has a theme song for the show. He's been a little rusty last time he played it, but man, it's great. We need to. It's been around for a while. I think since we started it. Yeah, from the almost very a nice. time, huh? Oh, here, hold on. I, I want to yeah. do something silly, Jim. Let me help you here. All right, there we go. Yeah, show us the butt too. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> she said that like she said it over and over again, didn't she? That didn't come out. That came out like There's the butt, like. <laughs> Tail. That's right. Turn and show us the butt. <laughs> Get your, I got my camera phone out because I want people to see your shirt better, too. Oh, yeah. Someone's claiming this isn't a pig. 
This what is it? Then? It's not a pig. But what do you? Yeah, exactly. It's a pig I mean, bank. Seems like a pig to oh, me. Oh, that's a new chatter too. Pig nose. Joss Gia. I think that person's been in before. Have they? Yeah. He's got a charming personality. What a what a Just, cute face. Uh, it is a cute face. This pig. I think there's all right, money well, in there better. too. Is Do we read all the names? There's already a, there's already some money in there. No, I'm there's still there's reading. Some money here. in there. Forgive me, folks. I'm still on my Alex Rivera high here, so I'm not completely connected to reality. What a fantastic... Where did we leave off? I'm still like, Jehovah's Wife? Say what? <laughs> I was try trying to get back to it. I'm sorry, Tracy. It's all right. We made it all the way mean... down to... We were past Van Porkstall, past Manly, Manly Pig Pork Hall. Manly Pig Hall was on there. You, I think the last one was Bank Bank oh, On. That's right, Bank On. Bank On. Which I like, but that one's kind of hard to roll off the tongue. So okay, so Bank On, Sir Roger Bacon, Alistair Pigley, Sowley, Suey Tawdry, <laughs> Suey Tawdry. That's funny. Hi Ham. These are really inside. A Biff. Yeah, these we kind of have to keep them all, but someone's gonna win tonight. Hi, Ham a Biff. Hamunculus. <laughs> Hamaphrodite. Bath Ham Et. Pigala Auger. Albert Pork. Swine Effluvia or Effluvia Swine. Emmanuel Swindenborg. Jesus the Pig. Christ. <laughs> that was no boo. Uh, Pigzilla. Lard Bahamut. <laughs> I get it now, finally. That one, I read that three times when we were talking about it earlier. Lard Bahamut. Major oh. Porcana. <laughs> and the final answer Porkums. Comes. Okay, I'm going to read through one more time really fast for everyone. We have Pygmalion, Joey Von Hammy Porkstall, Hugh de Piggins, Jacques de Porquet, Hamley Pig Hall, Rudolf Schweiner, Bank On, Sir Roger Bacon, Alistair Pigley, Sowley, Sui Tawdry, High Ham Abiff, Hamunculus, Ham Aphrodite, Bath Hamet, Pigala Auger, Albert Pork, Swine Effluvia, or Effluvia Swine, Emmanuel Swindenborg, Jesus the Pig Christ, Pigzilla, Lard Bahamut, Major Porcana, or Porkum. So please, if you haven't voted yet, I'm voting at this very moment. <laughs> Vote now, and we're going to follow up. How much? We're going to have to kill time here for a second and do something, huh? so we can make sure there's votes, yeah. so everybody has time to vote. Um, I could I could do some reading if you want. I mean, how we, much time are we killing? No, that's per I just figured just enough to make sure that if anybody wants to sneak over to the Discord or jump on your page, click the link so they can get in on this voting. Oh, the, I guess we should uh, emphasize the other thing, folks. Whoever wins, whoever's name gets chosen is getting this prize mailed to their home address or to their P.O. box or to whatever discreet location they can pick this item up from. What and, is it, Sean? Um, this is... Hawaiian host over oh Hawaiian host, I didn't think about it's that. It's the host. It's the host. The holy host. The holy Hawaiian host. The, this is uh, pork, porky porky host. Uh, over eighty years, genuine classic original. The original Aloha gift of dark chocolate Aloha Max, rich dark chocolate covered macadamias, individually wrapped for freshness. All right. Over 80 So years. the winner gets to pig out on chocolate. Yeah, on the Hawaiian <laughs> host. I'm trying to... Let me look here. Go ahead, Tracy. No, no, so, so are we um, killing time here? Because I, I so. have Because I have something that I thought was interesting. It's from this book, King Jesus. It's a novel by Robert Graves. Okay, Did you ahead. want to say more about the macadamia nuts? I'm sorry. No, I was just looking. I mean, I, it's, I, I, I tried one or two earlier because Jim did have some samples out and available, and I'm a chocolate fiend. 
But uh, there's definitely <laughs> more more detail here, but maybe we'll read that after someone's won. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, the reason why I thought of this um, is because you, Alex was talking about Mary, and he mentioned something. Oh, yeah, he was quoting something about Mary, Mary the hairdresser. <laughs> and uh, so I, I don't even know where this comes from exactly, but it's a th it's a thing associated apparently with Mary Magdalene that she's that her uh, her title is Mary the hairdresser. Right, yeah, I found that um, weird. A weird I, I'd never heard of that till tonight. I, I think th um, there's more to it, but I, there's no way I'm gonna figure it out right now. So, but I'll I'll read this because what this is, um, in this book, Mary Magdalene is also a prophetess, and she lives in a cave. Uh, she lives in the cave of Macpella, which is the cave of treasures, mm -hmm. the cave that Adam and Eve were buried in, and. Uh, so Jesus is going, visiting her, I think, to get some kind of a blessing or something from her. Um, and she's like this horrible hag in this book. She's like this, you know, evil witch sort of woman. And this is in a um, novel, you say, called King Jesus? Yeah, yeah. Robert Graves, the guy who wrote The White Goddess and uh, what's what his other book? Well, he wrote several books about, like, one's just called Greek Myths. Right. That's all his interpretation of Greek myths and stuff. But anyway, so he's a poet and uh, writes a, a lot of um, books about comparative mythology. Or did, you know, he's dead now. Right. His but name, anyway, his this name is was a, really familiar sorry, when you ahead. said it. No, I just uh, I was just confirming that, that the name's definitely familiar, so. Is he the guy? I think he's the guy that did I, Claudius. Yes, he's the guy who wrote I, Claudius. Okay. And that's why um, why he you know was able to make a living. That was the only thing he ever did that made an, any significant money for him. But anyway, so this in this chapter, they end up having an argument. <clears throat> I'll just go ahead and read and read the whole chapter if if or start. I'll start it off at least. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> well, I like asking for permission, <laughs> but because uh, they they end up having a very interesting conversation that. Um, that illustrates the concept of iconop iconotropy, which is, I think, a term that he coined, that Robert Robert Graves coined. So it's the changing of icons over time, or you know, as they as they get adopted by different cultures and they get um, adopted into different meanings. So anyway, I'll just I'll start reading here. Mary the dress <clears throat> Mary the hairdresser led Jesus out through the gate of the enclosure and past the entrance of the cave of Machpelah to a rocky place not far away where awful was awful was flung. A-O-F-F-A-L. I don't know, like so maybe a flower meat. or something? No, it's a, what is it? awful is the meat um, of the, the organs of the animal. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. A pariah of dogs that had been nosing there among bones and rotten flesh howled a welcome to her, sitting in a row on their haunches. She ordered them to be silent. They ceased howling and whimpered softly. She picked her way through the filth to the rock face and there uttered a prayer of placation in a language strange to Jesus, though he knew, he knew well who it was whom she invoked. Mary stood with her ear close to the rock as if waiting for an answer. Presently, she pressed with her shoulder against a part of the rock that projected, and a great stone door rolled back in its socket. The moon shone full into a small square chamber from which a curved flight of steps descended into darkness. They entered together, and the stone, and the stone clashed to behind them. I, get, I think that means it closed, you know. Um, Mary pulled a lighted lamp from under her cloak and beckoned for Jesus to follow her. The air was sweet, and the shallow, well-cut steps led them after a long spiral descent to another blank wall. She uttered the same prayer of placation, and after listening again and waiting and repeating the prayer, pressed against the stone, which rolled back in its socket. They stood in a cave constructed in beehive shape, uh -huh, with great unhewn slabs of limestone painted in red and yellow ochre with spirals, double spirals, filfots, which I, I believe those are swastikas, 
uh, reversed fill faults and forked lightning. In the middle rose a phallus shaped pillar beside which lay a pair of crouched skeletons, one of them lacking its skull and between them the gilded horns of an antelope ox. <clears throat> Uh, excuse me. Of the three recesses in the cave, the right hand, the right hand one was empty. In the left hand recess stood two striped sacrificial basins, an ivory tripod, and the mask of a pale bearded man with sunken cheeks. In the central recess stood a small chest with rings for two for two carrying poles, plated with gold and surmounted by gold cherubim. Opposite a long narrow tunnel led away into darkness. Propped against the wall near its entrance were two narrow stone tablets, one of red Edomite, red Edomite sard, and, the, and one of golden Numidian marble, carved on both sides with numerous small pictures. Black blood coated the bottom of each of the striped basins. Jesus said to Mary in, in accusation, it is bull's blood. She asked him mockingly, have you not read how Moses raised a circle of 12 pillars and a 13th in the middle for an altar and sacrificed bulls and how he caught the gushing blood in these very, very basins? Wow. I have read what I have read. This is Jesus replying, but, th but this blood is not that. You come here to lap bull's blood from the basins and to prophecy through the mouth of the death mask, which is Adam's jawbone, in which Adam's jawbone is set. Wow. Whatever I do is done in obedience to my mistress, Jesus replies. I defy her in her own house. Oh, I'm sorry. That was, uh, I'm wrong. That, long, that last line was uh, Mary saying, whatever I do is done in obedience to my mistress. And then Jesus says, I defy her in her own house. Be, and then reply, beware of gangrene in the thigh and leprosy in the lip. Jesus replies, your mistress has no power over me. I have never accompanied with any daughters of hers, nor ever called on her name. Therefore, again, I ask your help against her paramour. I refuse it, rebel. Why do you not abase yourself before the cherubim? Do you not recognize the holy ark of the covenant, which the prophet Jeremiah restored to my mistress for safekeeping before he fled to Egypt? The prophet Jeremiah did well to remove the thing from the site of the conflict congregation jesus replies holy as it was holy as it once was the daughters of aaron had defiled it with their abominations it had become a thing of death and he did well to lay it up in the house of death so she replies take my lamp and read the pictures on the two tablets the golden and the red they were laid up in the ark together with the round black thunderstone which your forefathers rolled and rolled about in as a rain charm Look, there the stone lies at the foot of the ark. It is the ancient dripping rock of Miriam, which it is said rolled and went along with Israel, and for striking which Moses forfeit, and for striking which Mo Moses forfeited his life. He he took the lamp and studied the tablets as if with indifference. What are these to me, which have I not read the scriptures here, pictured in a confused order? are the annals of kings and princes and prophets of Israel. And she replies, in your own heart lies confusion. There is one story and one story only. It runs booster feeden as one plows alternately from right to left and from left to right. When the golden tablet is done, the red begins. It is the story of the ancient covenant from which the ark takes its name. The covenant sworn between my mistress and the twin kings of Hebron that she will share her love and her anger equally between them both, so long as they obey her will. Here it begins. She took the lamp from him and pointed with her finger. A great contest ensued between Mary and Jesus over the interpretation of the pictures, and neither was ever at a loss for word of contradiction. Mary said, see where my mistress, the first Eve, is seated on her birth stool under the palm tree? The people are awaiting a great event, for the pangs are upon her. Swiftly, Jesus answered her, no, witch, that is not the first Eve. That is Deborah judging the Israelites under the palm tree of Deborah, for so it is written. Not so, she replies, for here my mistress is delivered of twins, begotten of different fathers, namely Adam, son of the Tenebrith, or Terebinth, and Azazel, son of the Kermok. 
she ties a red thread about the wrist of Azazel to distinguish him from his brother, Adam. No, he replies, but Tamar, Judah's daughter-in-law, is delivered of her bastards, Zerah and Pharaoh's, and ties the thread about the wrist of Zerah. For so it is written. Not so, she replies, for here the infant Azazel is shown to his father, the king, and here Adam is laid in the ark of Oziers in Sedge, and committed to the waters of the brook Eshel, lest the king should destroy him. No, he replies, but the infant Samuel is presented to Eli at the tabernacle of Shiloh, and the infant Moses is committed to the waters of the Nile, for so it is written. Not so, she replies, for here the shepherd's wife takes and suckles Adam, while my mistress, the first Eve, stands apart, watching. No, he says, but Pharaoh's daughter finds Moses among the bulrushes and consigns him to the care of Joshebed, his own mother, for so it is written. Not so, she says, for here my mistress, the first Eve, restores her virginity by bathing in the fish pool of Hebron and becomes the king's daughter, my mistress, the second Eve. No, he says, but King David from the roof of his palace at Jerusalem sees the wife of Uriah the Hittite bathing and lusts after her, for so it is written. Not so, she says, for here the tale of Adam continues. Adam, now a youth, destroys a lion and a bear which come among his flock, and here is taken before his uncle the king, who is ignorant of his parentage. No, he replies, but the youth of David, uh, the youth is David's son, David, son of Jesse, and the king is Saul, for so it is written. Not so, she says, for at the king's desire, Adam also strangles a fearful serpent, which has destroyed thousands of the king's people with its fiery breath, and it displays it to the people, and displays it to the people. No, he says, but Moses raises the brazen seraph in the wilderness to stay the pestilence, for so it is written. Not so, she says, for here the king has taken Adam into his household. He and his brother Azazel are for a while united in loving comradeship. No, he says, but David and Jonathan, Saul's son, become blood brothers, for so it is written. Not so, she says, for here Adam takes up an ox goad and falls without warning upon the king's bodyguard. No, he says, but Shab Shamgar, the son of Anath, wields the goad against the Philistines, for so it is written. Not so, she replies, for here Adam slays his uncle the king and strikes off his head with his own sword. No, he says, but David slays Goliath, the Philistine, for so it is written. Not so, she says, for here Adam mourns for his uncle at the Oaks of Mamre. No, he says, but David mourns here for his enemy, Abner, for so it is written. Not so, she says, for here Adam is preparing for royalty. See where he rests under a tree of royal broom to prepare for his vigil? No, he says, but Elijah rests here, for so it is written. Not so, she says, for here Adam at his vigil tames the wild beasts that come against him. No, he says, but Adam names them in Eden, for so it is written. Not so, she says, for here Adam is anointed king of Hebron. No, he replies, but Samuel anoints King David over Israel, for so it is written. Not so, she says, for here preparations are made for Adam's marriage feast to my mistress, the second Eve. No, he replies, but provisions of wheat and barley and flour and beans and honey and butter and mutton and cheese and beef, together with beds, basins and pots, are brought as a gift to David at Mahanaim, for so it is written. Not so, she says, for here other provisions that were lacking are brought to Adam's marriage feast. No, he says, but Ziba, the servant of Mep Mephibosheth, brings David bread and raisins and summer fruit and wine, for so it is written. Not so, she says, for here the marriage contest is depicted. Adam wrestles all night with his enemies until he is lamed, and at dawn halts upon the right thigh and becomes bull-footed. No, he says, but our father Jacob wrestles all night with an angel at Penuel and suffers, th suffers that injury, for so it is written. Not so, she says, for here at Beth Holga, the marriage arbor of the hobbler, <laughs> bull-voiced mimes call upon the bridegroom Adam to come rushing with his bull foot. <laughs> no, he says, but Baal's priests... Is it okay if I continue? Yes, yeah, please don't relaxed. stop now. Keep going. <laughs> not so for here. Okay. No. Oh, no. But Baal's priests upon Carmel. Right. Ba Baal's priests upon Carmel dance their hobbling Peshach and cut themselves with knives and vainly invoke Baal. For so it is written. 
Not so, she says, for here Adam comes rushing to his bride, my mistress, the second Eve, who dances by the reeded fish pool with her 50 daughters. No, he says, but Miriam and her maidens <clears throat> dance in triumph by the sea of reeds after the army of Pharaoh has been engulfed. And Aaron, her brother, joins in the dance, for so it is written. Not so, she says, for here the marriage feast of Adam has begun, and here he sits at table, his bullfoot resting on a footstool. No, he says, but lame Mephibosheth is invited to feast at the table of King David, for so it is written. Not so, she says, for when the feast is done, Adam companies in public with my mistress, the second Eve, and with the 50 daughters of my mistress. No, he says, but the rebel Absalom companies in public with Abigail of Carmel, and with the other wives and concubines of his father David, for so it is written. The golden tablet is done, she says, and the golden king has triumphed. Here begins the red tablet and the triumph of the red king. See where Adam, inventor of the lyre, plays melodies and sings in his own honor. His twin, Azazel, son of the murdered king, glowers at him, javelin in hand, plotting revenge. No, he says, but David plays and sings psalms to ease Saul's melancholy, for so it is written. Not so, she says, for here Azazel dances naked before the Ark of the Covenant, imploring my mistress to keep faith with him. Wearing her horned moon headdress, she smiles at him favorably. No, he says, but David dances before the Ark and his wife, Michal, otherwise called Egla, the heifer, laughs scornfully at him from a lattice, for so it is written. Not so, she says, for here my mistress, the second Eve, true to her covenant, invites Azazel to her bed. No, not, he says, not, but Amon forces his sister Tamar, for so it is written. Not so, she says, for here my mistress ties Adam's hair to his bedpost for Azazel to shear. No, he says, but the, deceit, the deceitful Delilah ties the hair of her husband Samson to a weaver's beam, for so it is written. Not so, she says, for here Azazel comes by night into Adam's chamber with scissors to, sh to shear his sacred hair. No, he says, but David, finding King Saul asleep in a cave, spares his life and cuts off only the hem of his robe, for so it is written. Not so, she says, for here Adam's hair is cut off and the sacred hem of his robe with its five blue tassels. And here Azazel, with his companions, pelt and revile him as he goes up the hill to his death. No, he says, but she may... Shemai and his fellows revile and pelt David at Behurim, for so it is written. Not so, she says, for here Adam is blinded by Azazel. No, he says, but Samson is blinded by the Philistines at Gaza, for so it is written, to the terebinth of Hebron, and they're unmanned. No, he says, but the king of Ai is hanged on a tree by Joshua at Ai, for so it is written. Not so, she says, for here Azazel raises a circle of 12 pillars with an altar for a 13th. She will sacrifice Adam in honor of my mistress, the second Eve, and here are the striped basins for the blood. No, she said, or he says, but Moses raises the 12 pillars at the foot of Sinai, which is Horeb, for one for each tribe of Israel, and the basins are to catch the blood of the slaughtered bullocks, for so it is written. Not so, she says, here comes maimed Adam limping into the circle, and here he is hacked in pieces. No, he says, but King Agag walks delicately into the circle of Gilgal, where the prophet Samuel hacks him in pieces, for so it is written. Not so, she says, for here 12 men of Hebron feast upon Adam's flesh, but Adam's shoulder joint is reserved for Azazel's eating. No, he says, but the shoulder joint of the ox is reserved for King Saul by Samuel at the feast of Mizpah, for so it is written. Not so, she says, for here a messenger comes to my mistress, the second Eve, to tell her it is done. She shrouds herself and becomes the third Eve with dog, owl, and camel. No, he says, but Rebecca dismounts from her camel and veils herself when she sees our father Isaac approach to claim her in marriage, for so it is written. Not so, she says, for here the people of Hebron mourn for Adam. Fool, do you not know where you stand? This is the innermost chamber of the cave of Machpelah. Hosiah, that evil king, stopped up its entrance, but we Kenites have guarded the secret of its other door. See where my mistress, the third Eve, carries away the, stri the stripped bones of Adam to this very cave to lay them in a burial ark? No, he says, but the children of Israel mourn for Moses at Pisgah, and the Lord God, who is veiled lest any man should see his face and die, 
buries him secretly in the valley of Mo in yeah a valley of Moab for so it is written not so she says for here you cannot refute me here at last you see my mistress in trinity my mistress the first eve white as leprosy my mistress the second eve black as the tents of my people my mistress the third eve her death's head mercifully shrouded see where the spirit of adam prostrates himself before my triple mistress and holds her to her covenant while azazel looks on aghast no but i refute you he says here moses complains to the lord against miriam his sister and aaron his brother who have mocked his ethiopian wife Aaron prostrates himself before the Lord who punishes Miriam with leprosy, for so it is written. Not so, she says, your prevarications will not serve you, for see where my mistress has granted Adam his plea. His spirit rises from the dry bones of the burial ark and uttering threats to Azazel, returns once more to the wheel of life. He will be born again to my mistress the first eve as his own son and twin to the son of Azazel. No, but I refute you. Here comes, this is, Jesus in reply, here comes King Saul. Here King Saul consults the witch of Endor who raises the spirit of Samuel from the, dry from the dry bones of Samuel, for so it is written. Not so, she says, have done in the mother's name. Here the red tablet ends and the gold tablet takes up the story again with my mistress, the first Eve, in pangs beneath the palm tree. You have had my answers, said Jesus. What need to give them again? They are not acceptable to my triple mistress, she says. The living God in whom I trust is immeasurably stronger than your mistress, he says. He can create what is from what is not. He can make what was as though it had never been. Her ancient tables record a covenant of death, which the Lord God overturned and set aside at the well of Kadesh when he swore a new covenant of life with the servant, Mo with the servant, his servant Moses. The books of Moses record that covenant. They are stored in the holy ark of every synagogue throughout Jewry and written on the tablets of every loyal heart. Strong as he may be, she says, how can your living God rescue you from this house of death, which lies in the valley of death? No man ever defied my mistress in her own house and escaped alive. Fool, this place is the end of all venturesome fools. The stopped tunnel is choked with their bones. It is written, he says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil for thou, Lord, art with me. Therefore, my fate will be with the fa as the father ordains not as your mistress ordains. I am released from the jurisdiction of the female. I have come to destroy her works. Mary the hair hairdresser began to comb her long white hair with an ivory comb, and as she combed, invoked the ancient powers of evil one by one to rise against Jesus and overthrow him. She called upon the scaly footed Shedem and the snouted Ruhim, and on the Mazakim, the Harmers, and the goat-like serum of the crags, and on the ash ass-haunched Lilum of the sandy wastes, and on the Shabiri, the demon of blindness who haunts uncovered pools of water, and on the Rua Zalakta, the demon of catalepsy, and on Ben Nephilim, the demon of epilepsy, and on Rua Kezaret, the demon of nightmare, and on Rua Tegazat, the <laughs> demon of delirium, and on Rua Karayako, the demon of melancholy, and on Shibeta, the demon of cramps, and on Rua Zenunim, <laughs> the demon of sexual madness, and on Deber, the demon of pestilence, and lastly on Pura, the insidious demons of sloth and forgetfulness. Those are the ones I am stuck with. <laughs> of whom God fearing Jews stand in the greatest dread. Um, are you okay, Tracy? Take a breath. <laughs> no, no, I'm just wondering. Like, uh, I'm trying to find like the best ending place here because I don't think we'll get through the whole chapter. We're but we're more than halfway through it, but still, it's. Oh my goodness. Uh, but there's another poem part. So yeah, let me read read like one. One more page. Yeah, that's okay? fine. Go ahead. We're, I'm, we're all enthralled. At least I am. I, 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 <clears throat> I'm going to have to read this now. Okay. All these powers came flocking about him with fury and terror and worryings, trying to tear the holy fringes of his garment and the phylacteries from his arm and forehead. He remained quiet and undismayed. His lips unfaltering, unfalteringly repeated the hear, or, hear, O Israel, three times against the first Eve three times against the second Eve, and three times against the third Eve. When he had done, he said, in the name of the Holy One of Israel, blessed be he, depart, creatures of the night and death, to the desolate places assigned to you by the disposer of all. They vanished, gibbering one by one. Mary suddenly screamed out, I know you, adversary of my mistress. Are you come here at last, son of David, apostate Adam? He commanded her to silence, but she stopped her ears and screamed again. 
The apostate was driven from the paradise of Eden, which is Hebron. He was driven as a wanderer over the face of the earth, but it is prophesied that he shall return to Hebron at last to make his reckoning with the great goddess. The apostate may deny his mother the first eve and his bride the second eve. He may reject yet the third eve, his grandam. Oh, okay, sorry. He may reject yet the third eve, his grandam will inexorably claim him for her own. She replies, if the first eve be denied for the love of the living God and the second eve be rejected for the love of the living God, will the third eve find bones to bury? Or, uh, I'm sorry, actually, that was him. Uh, that was him saying that to her. Uh, Mary tore at the flesh of her forearm with her dog teeth and greedily sucked the blood. Then seizing the death mask of the old Adam from its peg in the recess and thrusting it on her head, she began to prophesy in rough hexameters, her voice piping and querulous. Adam, son of the terebinth, Adam only begotten, born at the death of the year from the green-eyed Miriam's birth stool, birth stool, wrapped from Azazel's fury by wandering shepherds of Hebron. Your first feats astonish your first feats astonishment spread in a region of wonders. None could divine your secret. You sucked all Solomon's wisdom. Adam, son of the terebinth, well you endured your, your vigil. Two score days upon Horeb, defying bestial powers. Now shall the ever young prophet return once more to anoint you. You shall be Lord of the land, shall enter Miriam's chamber. Adam's path shall you tread, nor fail these covenant tables till it at the last you hang by friends and kindred forsaken, bound to the terebinth tree with strong green branches of willow, suffering there as is right, distressed with odious torments. Twelve bold shepherds shall drink of your blood, shall eat of your body. Eve, our mother, shall laugh in dreams her pythoness bidding Adam's bones to recover where Adam's skull lies buried. I guess I'll leave it there. Wow. Thank you. That's... Uh... Oh, Tell awesome. us the, the name of the book and the author one more time, please. Sorry. King Jesus, Robert Graves. Yeah, that's a really polemic back and forth there. That was fascinating. Thanks. Yeah, I've, I've always liked this. And um, actually, my, my husband, my late husband, Brian, uh, once we read this book, we read this back and forth to each other, and it just seemed to uh, evoke all kinds of, uh, I don't know, feelings and and uh, and spirits and stuff. <laughs> so you, it's it seems like it's an invocation, you know. Oh, it absolutely is. I mean, you well, it's uh, it's funny. It's like a, it's like a, a prayer of disagreement. <laughs> yes. And so you guys uh, read yeah. it aloud together, like you were reading it like a movie script like you were reading it together that way you mean yes yeah that's and cool it, it was very weird it, it, it made a very weird feeling in the room <laughs> oh <laughs> sure we, it makes me think of uh, doing recitation in church uh you know you sit in church and uh not every church does this but um some of the protestant churches i've been to and i know they do it at the catholic mass too you know there's call and response you know they, they read something the preacher does and then the the entire congregation answers back, and that's what it made me. You know, I haven't thought about that for a long time. But isn't that what a catechism is? You know, or, I, I, don't I don't know, know well enough for sure. I always thought catechism just meant um, like the structure of the teaching, almost like curriculum. But I I don't know. Um, I posted a screen capture in the Discord, and it looks like we do have one pig name in the lead. But I was still kind of, I know there was some question whether or not people were able to get in there and vote. So um, we can give you just a few more minutes if you want to try and squeeze in there and vote. But I really doubt you're going to be able to win out. Right now, Hamunculus is ahead with seven votes out of 11. Okay. Well. How do you feel about I that? How do I feel about it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How do you feel about it? Well, that's the one I wanted, so I feel great. But I mean, I don't. <laughs> it, was there one that you preferred more so than Hamunculus? I thought you would be partial to the Hamunculus. I am, and I think it fits with 
him being this container of things, you know? Yeah. Because I, I feel like the a homunculus, especially the way we've talked about it, is, you know, the container of an aeon, so... Yeah, this could be the container of the Aeon of RX only. It's the it, show. it's the Athenor inside the Athenor, <laughs> right? Um, ham Munkula, ham, 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 or, okay. Wasn't the the variation Ham Oinculus ham also oinculus. available? Ham o, yeah, Ham Oinculus. I'd say if we're gonna go with the the Munkulus suffix, that any. At that point, any uh, variation is acceptable to me. It can be hamunculus. It can be hamunculus. Well, should we? There is only one on on the uh, list. Right. There's, a, there's a problem that, there because the person that submitted hamunculus is different than the person that added yeah. the oink. Oh well, then so, the one I think the maybe, one that got maybe chose, we should have a tiebreaker. Uh, for oh, you think we need to do a tiebreaker? Yeah, in the in the chat. Or. Or something. You can get go and get break. another bag of macadamia nuts. I don't know. <laughs> oh, and by the <laughs> way, for, <laughs> for any uh, people in the chat that thought I was sitting here eating the prize on camera, you are incorrect. <laughs> I was not. These are not all gone. Crap, Jim. Okay, oh, no! so the idea of sharing it between the two is just not even. Just kidding. No, we have plenty. Jim's got, Jim has cases of these things upstairs. You should see the whole, it's like ankle deep. Really? <laughs> no. <laughs> you had me go in there for a minute. My wish. Well, then everybody should get, everybody gets a prize. Just drown macadamia wrappers. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Well, so Harrison says he cheated. Krista says homunculus really lays it down we could do a secondary poll for spelling do it now what um if you if you think we want to do a secondary bracket poll please put press one in the chat if you think the name as written now is good enough please press two and we'll get like a vibe of the vibe of the thing here yeah we'll do a couple minutes and see how that goes where are we you mean you want us to enter the numbers one or two in the yeah, chat? Yeah, do. Oh, I don't know. Do uh, the three of us could just decide on our own too. Do we want to uh, have a? Do we need to bracket this off? Hemunculus versus hemunculus, or or is hemunculus already won? Which is it? Talk to me. My opinion. Here. You want my opinion? Yeah. While well, the voting is still yeah, going. Yeah. Okay, I think the oink is a nice addition, but I definitely I feel like both. People should be rewarded somehow. Oh, we could always do that but, too. We could just call it a not necessarily a tie, but a we, compromise or a. You know, the the second place can get the shirt that I made. Hey, okay. that's the, uh, the ham shirt. Well, we could all sign it. Oh, I don't. I don't think you can do it. It's perfect the way it is. I've. I've. I'm covetous of the idea that someone would get it. <laughs> yeah. Well. Which makes it a good you prize. You should have came up with a homunculus derivative. Yeah, well, we need to make sure to get a good copy, a good picture of that, so we can make more shirts. If this is going to be the Athenor inside of the Athenor, this is where we're going to make our gods. <laughs> For the next calendar okay. year, I'd say, it's right? The theurgy? Isn't that the right word? God making? Theurgy. Yes. That's a good word. Krista says she wants to, the shirt because it will smell like you, Jim. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. That's a that's a that's a more of a girl thing than a guy thing. But don't be fooled, folks. Guys do it too. Like if your girlfriend's gonna be gone for ten days, you'd be like, go get her hoodie. You'd be like, <sighs> right? <laughs> okay. I think that's the real reason that uh, that, that hoodies get stolen. It's not just because they're stylish or comfortable. It's because they smell like someone that you love. Yeah, there's a okay. There's or at least real, someone uh, that you used to love until just <laughs> recently, or whatever you know. <laughs> I think good hoodies are a commodity. I well, always, they why are. I always shrink. I want to get a, you know? an American brand or whatever they are. Man, they're like a hundred bucks, but they look so cool. So, God making would be Thea Poises, Harrison says. The, uh, oh, that's right. Theurgy is really just uh, invoking of spirits, huh? That's true. 
Yes. So, so are we just going to send two prizes? That sounds like a good plan. I like the idea of just sending two prizes. So who, two prizes? Who, are, who are the lucky winners this week? I, who, I seem to recall... Go ahead. I was just going to say the same thing. Who... <laughs> well, I think I think Boomstick Quaid uh, was Ham Oinculus, and Jacob Bacchus was Hamonculus. Okay, so it looks like uh, Harrison and Jacob Bacchus have both won the Hamonculus naming contest for this guy, who already has some money in him. I wonder how much money I have in my pocket. Oh yeah. Oh, I thought it was I thought it was Windhammer, but maybe I was reading your uh yeah, it is. They're right. Everyone's correcting him. Windhammer is oh. the one that came is up. Is it Windhammer? With the Hamonculus. Oh, oh okay. sweet. Hey, sorry about the mistake cool, there, yeah, Windhammer. Sorry. Um here I'm going to uh continue the ritual process here with some Oh yeah, it is Windhammer. Some monies. Put some monies in there. Lucky 7 is a good number, right? Or should we go with 8 because of what Alex said? I'm going to do 8. Triple eight. eight. And eight. <laughs> I, I think it's possible we could throw in um, the keychains, too, because the person that made the keychains said that he would be willing to make some more. And so I, I, I'm not saying uh, it would necessarily be sent at the same time, but maybe, you know, oh, a week we, or so later. Yeah, we, a can, good idea. we can definitely include uh, keychains. Um, in the the prize process now we're getting somewhere we don't even know what we're going to spend this money on yet but it's in there oh hey good idea you're the pig put the money in the pig one dollar bill um if you're feeling the temptation to get your own piggy bank and fill it up you're the pig is a great time to do it if you're uh superstitious at all or not familiar with um chinese astrology then make sure you look up your sign and which one is in the enemy year of the pig because they all recommend that if you're in the enemy year of the pig to not do it. And it also says things like don't eat pork. Don't and eat like, what? Eat pork? Yeah, don't eat pork during the year of the pig and all kinds of other stuff. So it's definitely fascinating and worth looking into the whole... Uh, Who's the pig's enemy? I, I don't have, I don't remember off the top of my head. You, you'll have to look it up. Good, good but question. yeah, so that's the plan. We're going to send you out some... Uh, Hawaiian Host, Dark Chocolate, Aloha Max. And also, see, so you're going to give somebody the shirt? Yeah, sure. All right. So I guess, um, who is a Harrison and... Oh, I forgot. Windhammer. And Windhammer. Windhammer. So uh, the, the first prize, this goes this goes to, to Hamunculus. To Hamunculus right? Hamac yeah. And so, That's Windhammer. So Ham and Oink, that's your shirt. That's the shirt. Ham and oink. All right. It's a picture. So, show. Uh, to, to seal up that deal and reassure you that we're going to get your prizes off to you in a timely fashion, we do request that you private message either myself or Jim. But since we have the prizes, that's going to be the easiest. Um, drop us a private message in the Discord on the Twitter or email. Yeah, that works. And um, we will correlate with you and mail out your awesome prizes. Thank you for your help. I also was thinking we need to get this guy someplace. Permanent, like, oh, yeah, to, to sit in the show, like a shelf. Can you can we see it on the uh, can you guys see that there? If we if we put a little shelf right there, yeah, almost so we could put it right above the sign, yeah. I don't see anything, yeah, yeah. There you go, right? Or, or, yeah, or below the sign. Can you see it? Oh, that's a good idea, right here, <laughs> yeah. All right, it's gonna fall down and break. No, we'll secure it. <laughs> we'll glue it to the wall. This is a this is our job every day is to make stuff way more delicate than this. I, I'm so reassured that this is okay by contrast oh, yeah. to what we work that with every day. That thing is solid. You should have seen this thing that Jim had to take apart yesterday. I thought he was going to cry. Oh, it was <laughs> so fragile. It was a headless horseman sculpture. Yeah. With, uh, out of 20, It was sculpted 25 years ago out of oil clay and the oil had evaporated out of the clay, and so it was just crumbly and just a mess. Yeah, a lot of the time when you mold something to make a mold out of it, uh, when, you, when you're molding it, uh, hopefully it stays together. But when you take it apart, a lot of the time it destroys or at least damages the art. 
and this piece that uh, Jim just sculpted was, I'd say, essentially lost. I mean, well, I didn't got... sculpt it. I, I molded it. Yeah, that's right. That's what I meant to say. Molded it. But yeah, it's it, it was destroyed in the molding process. I, I think the artist sent it to us so that it wouldn't deteriorate any farther. Some coinage, too. These are all Abraxas coins. <laughs> well, actually, that one's Mithras. So it was suggested that um, the pig could be augmented with painting on the outside. Yeah, that we're going to have Adam Lore that. I want to get Adam Lore on the show to come over and play some songs with us. He said he's going to uh, come incognito, but we'll still know it's him. But we're going to get some kind of costuming, it sounds like. But Oh, okay. Sounds good. Play music, paint the pig. So Harrison, do you want us to sign the, the shirt? That's a good question. That's a good question. So we could all sign it for you, if you would like. You gotta wait because of the the delay. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I'm so, always watching the chat when I ask a question, and the <laughs> chat just sits there like they don't care. They don't want to talk to us. They don't. Keep it kosher. <laughs> <laughs> Man, like Harrison. <laughs> he can wear a particle target on his shirt. Nobody will look at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, if, you, if you did, you'd ruin the experiment. What did I see about the particle target just recently? Oh, I think there was a something about uh, a time travel experiment that uh, they... They prove time travel with a quantum computer, the Microsoft Quantum AI, with some yeah. sort of a digital thought experiment. I don't think that's the same thing that you're thinking of. But. No, I think that might be it. Oh, hey, the plan's working. Look at this. Some people are forlorn at their loss. Oh. It's okay, Krista. We're going to have lots more contests. This one went yeah. so well. We're gonna have more contests, of course. I'm all I'm already imagining being in line at the post office. Like <laughs> I know. Did, Krista, did you have a do you have an entry that we failed to put in? Is that what you're saying? Oh man, because we uh, combed we combed over the Discord trying to uh make sure that we are allocated um oh no, we're we're seeing the process here. Uh oh. <laughs> oh no. We're sorry. She didn't get entered. She's mad. I'm... Grr. <laughs> Grr, I'm mad. <laughs> yeah. What did, what did she put in? Or what did, what, what, what yeah, was the uh, what submission that we should have used? Should have put in there. Using your Krista? patented not a bomb wrapping material. <laughs> <laughs> it's a paper towel tube. What was it though, Krista? Tell us what it was. I want to know anyway. Oh, did, did you have an oh, entry, Krista? I think it was <laughs> maybe at the beginning, right? Before there was a... Uh-oh. <laughs> well, that's okay. Maybe, maybe there was one in general. I wanted her to have a romantic name. Yeah, I don't know. Hamunculus. Hamunculus. Pretty good. Okay. So, do we know the gender of the pig? Well, I I don't think if it's going to be homunculus that it has one. It's obviously a hermaphrodite. <laughs> You're right. You're right. How silly of me. A hermaphrodite. <laughs> oh, God. We better get off the air. I'm starting to turn stupid. <laughs> Lard Byron. That's funny. I saw a few names dropping that we didn't uh, that we didn't see. There was a there was an Einstein name up there, Albert Schweinstein. We might have to get more pigs, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. maybe I'll I'll get a pig and use it to try to force myself to save money for things too. Hermoinculus so, is a hermaphrodite. <laughs> <laughs> we need that on a t-shirt you know how they do those t-shirts that are just black with white writing it needs to say homunculus is a hermaphrodite hermaphrodite no, no, no other information offered <laughs> all right 
Okay. So congratulations, everybody, right? Yes, congratulations. 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 For participating. Condolences yeah, to thank those you guys. Didn't. Hold that up, Jim, so they can see what they're getting. Right We're here. still getting submissions. That's okay. We'll it's too late. It. Bank, bank from it. <laughs> <laughs> I like bank from it. I like oh, no, it's never too late. late. We can just draw a pig every week and name it and put it up on the wall. <laughs> Like, like great, like kindergarten. That's a great idea. That's what we should do with all the other names. They should all get a spot. Everybody find a pig and pigs. write your favorite name on it, and then put it in the Discord, and we'll print it off, and we'll we'll paper this whole room with fancy pig names. And then at the end of the year, the pig will burn them all up in the backyard. <laughs> don't believe me? We, if you if you don't believe me, go look at the July Fourth this last year's show. Me and Jim hauled the entire studio out in the backyard and sat there and drank and watched the fireworks and did the show on the Fourth yeah, of that July was a fun from, show. from Jim's backyard. Every once in a while, I would stop and go, "Woo!" Ooh. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> the fireworks went off. <laughs> That's what my dad taught me. You have to do. You have to. You have to. And Sean played his uh, 4th of July song. Yeah, I do. I have a song called Fireworks Barbecue that I wrote on oh, the 4th of July great a song. very long time ago. Great song. If you ever really want to make people mad on 4th of July when the fireworks explode, boo. You just look at their <laughs> face. You oh, like, no. Like the big, beautiful fireworks go, boo, boo. <laughs> I would do it early, though, because if you do it later, they might beat you up because people get really offended if you boo the fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, goes against that American spirit. All right. Is it okay by time? I think it is okay is by okay time. By... Yeah. <laughs> I think it is. I think we're all we're all just just to the right spot where no one can keep up. <laughs> <laughs> so that means it's okay by time. <laughs> all right. Again. Thank you for joining us this yes. week. Thanks again to Alex Rivera. Please uh, go ahead and uh, Alex has good stuff out there, folks. Go read it up, and um, we'll we'll be sure to have him back. And we will follow up with whoever sends us their contact information and be sending out some prizes. And um, we will keep you updated. Join us in the Discord. Please smash the like button, subscribe, click the little bell, like, share, subscribe, and do. You can press the like button if you don't want to yeah, smash you it. You don't have to smash it. All right, and we are now literally waving bye. Okay. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Okay, bye.